Hello guys, how are you all, welcome back to my channel, so today we are gonna see, what if Naruto and Fuu fall in love, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. Naruto's life was over. Quite literally, no sudden revivals, no random moments of awesome power saves you, just a failure and loss. He wasn't skilled enough. Naruto thought, afterlife didn't suck as much last time. Everything was black, not in a no-like kind of way, but honestly black, well he could still see himself normally. Sure, he wasn't a genius, but even he knew that in darkness you usually couldn't see your own hand in front of your face. Hey. Anyone here at least his parents should be. Or why did he feel so calm? He just lost all his friends. The world as he knew it was gone, and Madara would crown himself the master of it. But he didn't really have the power to get angry. Madara won, and they lost. Maybe he should have done some things differently. Actually taking his training with Jureya seriously. Not that it would change anything now. And suddenly it glared at him, a huge white font appearing out of nowhere. That end. Uh. Right, yes. I suck, I know. Return to the main menu. Yes or no. Main menu. Yes. Hey wait Naruto shouted, what the hell are you talking about? Suddenly the deep blackness was changed into something more familiar. Kanoha. Ha, ah, nice afterlife. Are you mocking me as if answering his question the universe threw some more words around him. Naruto RPG. Version 1.0. Naruto can't have nice additions. Well screw you too he pointed at the text and looked around. Kanoha, it looked more than before, more than the look of it rebuilt, a few months after Nagato's attack. What is going on? Manual activated. Shit. Do I have to read? Naruto RPG is a deranged game with bad references and a supposed lot of hilarious happenings. I do. Is this hell Naruto scowled, standing against a wall as more text came down. It is hell, definitively hell. Beginning with graduation day, the game will follow Naruto's adventures through the open world environment and the ability to change the happenings of the world. Here Naruto reacted and stopped sulking. He could start again. Save his friends. Save the world. And game mechanics are explained on their way. Do you wish to start a new game? Yes or no? Yes Naruto was excited, that could be his chance. His village no, it wasn't his village was it? Graduation day. Sasuke is still a prick, Sakura is still hating him, and the village is still rejecting him. Wait. Can I change my answer? Choose your perks. 5 perk points. More permanent perk points can be unlocked by completing different achievements. First choose your ninja art affinity. Ninjutsu Jinjutsu to Jutsu. Easy he grinned, hitting the ninjutsu one. Ninjutsu. More chakra, less control. Are you sure? It's not like it would change anything, right? So Naruto accepted it. Second, choose your elemental affinity. Four perk points remaining. Wind lightning earth water fire. More affinities are unlockable later on. Does that mean I can use bloodlines he shouted excitedly, a huge grin on his face. The game decided to ignore his question, waiting for his input. Right. I guess wind would be smarter, right? I know a lot of techniques already. This time the game decided to answer him. Techniques learned after graduation day are not available. Bullshy Naruto gripped his head, pulling on his hair. Does that mean I can't use my Rasengan? Yes. Ah he glared at the affinity screen and hit water, accepting it. At least something to get rid of Sasuke's annoying Katen. Please use three body perks now. Whoa the list was long. Really long, as in, if you put all the snakes that crazy Sanon could summon together you still couldn't reach that length. But most of them were grayed out. Looking a bit more closely at one he saw all cage and chibi form, placed in small squares right besides the great text. Tsunade's air on lock conditions. Beat Tsunade in her prime 10 times. What? How am I supposed to do that the game didn't answer? Are you only going to answer me when it makes me feel miserable? Yes. Growling he turned to the perks that weren't grayed out. Inchuriki. Her eyes wide open he thought about it. He could choose to not become a Jinchuriki. Well, it probably won't change much besides the fact he doesn't have Karama's chakra, which means there's no disadvantage. Hitting the button it spread downwards, though all but one option was grayed out. Jinchuriki of 1 to Jinchuriki of 9 and a few question marks under that. Pressing Jinchuriki of 9 he heard a loud shout in his head. Naruto Karama shouted. That hurt like a bitch. What did you do? Ah, hello Karama. Long time no see Naruto scratched the back of his head. Don't hello me he Karama was cut off and resumed suddenly. That's how it is, hmm? Well, I guess I can follow it, crazy woman. What? What do you mean? Sorry, Naruto, but I can't help you until you beat me again. Karama told him, not really sounding apologetic at all. Most people would be angry at that, but Naruto was always a competitive person. He accepted long ago that normal just didn't work for him. 
then be prepared to get your face kicked, Karama. Heh, as if Dottie could hear the grin on Karama's face already. Do perk points remaining. Going through the list again he saw more and more perks that could be interesting, but he could only choose two more, so he had to choose wisely. The word not quite fitting, hmm? Shut up. Swordsmen begin with a sword and generic knowledge of sword techniques. Blind start blind, but your other four senses are heightened. Stealthy you are spotted harder by enemies weaker or equal to you, and less likely to be spotted by enemies stronger than you. General Jutsu you know a Jutsu of your elemental affinity already. Sword sound cool Sasuke had one later on, maybe I could beat him one on one with this he pondered. It would decide what he starts out with, not what he could learn later on. But any advantage can help, and he never was one for stealth. Being stealthy is for pranks, facing your enemy mano a mano was how a real man did it. Swordsman and General Jutsu. He confirmed both and was thrown around the village. They open the menu, call menu. While in menu the world around you stops moving. Leaving the menu sends you back to where you were. Thanks for not he, he, he suddenly he sat in a chair at the academy, his comrades of war around him and alive. And. Knowledge the player has gained before this playthrough can't be shared with others. Trying to do so removes the ability to speak. So that's what you call silent protagonist Naruto muttered, shaking his head. Haruno Sakura, Yuzumaki Naruto and Ichiha Sasuke. Your sensei is had a Kakashi. Aruka's voice cut him out of his musings. Wait, if this way graduation day then. Then you he shouted, bringing up a lot of screams. Hitting the one titled skills he found a sword symbol under the Tajutsu section, and a water symbol under Ninjutsu. Touching Ninjutsu he looked at the three skills. Page Bunshin, Henge and Kawarimi. Going back and touching the water symbol he opened a screen with only one Jutsu. Water release. Large projectile shoot a giant blast of water at your enemy to knock them away or against an obstacle. That's actually not bad at all. Again, returning he opened the inventory and saw orange jumpsuit, zero defense and simple katana. Zero. Does that mean if I use other clothes I can take more hits he asked himself. Karama grumbled something, but he ignored it. Lastly, opening the sword symbol at the Tajutsu category he saw Kenjutsu techniques which consisted of different ways to cut someone. The Edo was some kind of fast draw, and just looking at the skill he could tell his body would easily remember the skill, but he didn't know what the LV. One meant. Training a skill can add to its efficiency. A leveled up skill can be used faster and with more power, at the same or less cost of chakra. Tajutsu generally doesn't cost chakra. Overhead strike and vertical slash didn't sound as spectacular. What was more useful was the actual Kenjutsu skill, saying that he knows how to use the sword in battle. Leave menu the world resumed, and he came back to the image of Sakura hitting her head against the table, and Shikamaru looking at him strangely. Not like that's important, he shrugged. Graduation day. Objective wait for Kakashi. Naruto wasn't a smart person. He knew that, and he also knew that hard work could beat even the most strategic of enemies. And he also knew that even though it seemed to be a game, he already saw the end of the world. And then he began to think. It's not just Konoha that needs his help. Kiri's Civil War. Quest. Kiri's Civil War helped the rebel forces or the loyalists to defeat their enemies. Gara. Quest. Jinchuriki of one meets Sabaku no Gara. The Sandame. Quest. Chunin exams be in Konoha at the time of the Chunin exam finals. He had many comrades. Konoha seemed so small compared to the allied shinobi forces. Worse, he could not act on the knowledge he had from the future. Whatever he did could change the course of the world, and even if it didn't, nobody would believe him. All he could do was train. Or help others. Graduation day. Optional objective talk to the Hokage about refusing to be a Konoha ninja for the sake of the world. You're helping an awful lot right now, aren't you? Naruto thought. No answer. Karama, what do you think? If you want an honest answer right now, this village isn't worth it. Karama told him. And that was what he really believed, this village scorned him, and until he risked his life again and again they wouldn't accept him. Ha! Ah. Screw this he shouted, hitting the table with his fists. He was so deep in thought, he didn't even realize that Kakashi had already put his head through the door. And screw you too. Kakashi pointed at himself as if asking, who, me and just scratched his head. I don't really think I like you, meet me on the roof. No now it was Sakura's and Sasuke's turn to look bewildered at him. I will go visit the old man, don't wait for me. Jumping out of the window he ran full speed to the Hokage Tower. Tsuu Kakashi stood on the roof with his two remaining genin. Is he always like that? Kakashi didn't quite expect his late teacher's son to be such an idiot. No surprisingly it was Sasuke that answered, he would have played a prank instead of just leaving. That sounds more like something one could expect, considering Naruto's reputation. I guess that's a bit discouraging. Kakashi shrugged and pointed at Sakura. You, introduce yourself, likes and whatnot. 
He will go to the Hokage after this, maybe he can learn what happened. He doesn't even try both thoughts. Old man Naruto jumped through the window of the office, ignoring the groan and mutterings about toads. If Naruto hadn't been bound by the player knowledge thing, he probably would have hugged the man and told him about Orochimaru. What is it, Naruto? I know Kakashi is usually late but... It's not about that, honestly. Naruto looked at the floor, a bit nervous. The Sandane, Saratobi Hiruzen was a legend, even his wrinkled face told of battles he had fought, a longing for peace in his eyes. The same look he saw in Jiraiya. I don't think I want to be a Konoha Shinobi. Sandame's reaction was predictable, his pipe fell out of his mouth, and the pen he held in his hand clattered to the floor. Why the old man asked him. He didn't sound accusing, it was honest bewilderment. What about your dream? The world is a big place, old man. Naruto wondered if his mature tone would make him suspicious, but he guessed the Hokage would know if an imposter was in his office. Konoha, I love it. It's the place where I grew up and found my dream, but there are so many things happening. What I want is not to be Hokage, I want respect and acceptance. Skill. Charisma unlocked. If you don't know what charisma is, search for the intelligent skill. Naruto tried to keep his face straight when the game mocked again. Charisma was right, you could make people see things your way, right? The Hokage smiled sadly. Maybe Mizuki's betrayal made him think over a few things. Very well, Genin Yuzumaki Hiruzen grinned, I accept your resignation under the condition you come to visit. Letting Ichin Chiriki go was foolish, and Danzo probably won't be happy, but if the rumors of that organization Jiraiya gathered information on were true, moving around could help keep him safe. Naruto grinned and gave Hiruzen his forehead protector. Who knows, maybe one day I will wear it again. I certainly hope so. Graduation day completed. Achievement. Wide wide world you are free of Konoha, under the protection of the Sandame Hokage you are free to leave. You are free to do quests outside. You gained one permanent perk point. Quest. Akatsuki a mysterious organization is searching for you, try to avoid them until you are confident in your strength. Quest. Wave Nami no Kuni is controlled by Gato, and its residents live in misery. Join or stand against him. Permanent perk point. When starting the game you started with 5 perk points. Now you have 6. Non-permanent perk points don't exist, unlocking a perk automatically spends the point. To unlock perk certain conditions have to be met. Thank you, old man. Naruto hugged him. Here, take this Hiruzen said, giving him a document. This is your official resignation and civilian papers. Using this you can leave Konoha, but be careful, if you are suspected to be a spy you could be attacked. Yeah, thanks again Naruto jumped out of the window, ignoring the old man's shouts about yet more toads. Obtained key item. Civilian papers and resignation. Hidden in the papers he found a note. There is an organization hunting for the Jinchuriki. If you need help, return. They are strong, rumored to be on par with Cage. Ha hey, thanks, old man. The Kashi appeared in the Hokage's office, a bit faster and ungraceful than usual. Hoka. Naruto is no longer a Konoha shinobi. Hiruzen hid his grin behind some documents. But why? What about Minato sensei's why? That wish died with him. Naruto asked to help the world outside, where people didn't know him. The Hokage smiled sadly. Where he could find the acceptance he searched for. Akakashi scratched the back of his head. Maybe I co. He's already gone. HMPH. Kakashi pouted. Menu. Naruto hit the stat screen and looked at the numbers. HP. Hit points, depending on the attack a certain amount of hit points is lost. In a spar the hit points are equal to the enemies, losing all HP means unconsciousness, if the enemy doesn't know mercy, it means death. Naruto swallowed hard. Chakra. The amount of chakra you have, using certain skills costs chakra. Low chakra equals exhaustion, no chakra means rapid HP degradation. Sounds like usual he thought about it. His HP had a small red arrow pointing up besides it. Touching it it spread outwards. HP regeneration. Your HP regenerates equal to the amount of Kyubi chakra in your system. Being an Uzumaki adds to the regeneration. That's why my wounds heal so fast, right? Nice he grinned. His HP said 5000 HP, his chakra 3000 C. That doesn't really sound like much opening his skill screen again he hit the Suiten Jutsu and got more information. Large projectile. Costs 30 chakra. No cooldown. Won't I need the hand seals Naruto asked aloud. Leave menu. Let's try this. Suiten. Large projectile he shouted, clapping his hands together and water shot out of his mouth, making him fly back and hit his head against a tree. Son of a bee. Oi oi oi, that looked like it hurt. You alright there boy a voice cut through the silent woods. Naruto looked around and saw an old man, standing on the tree using while walking. Yeah, I heal fast checking the stat screen he saw that his HP barely went down and was regenerating again. 
his chakra, while slower, was nearly full again too. What's a lonesome ninja doing in fire country? Ah, uh, me. I'm not a ninja Naruto grinned. Well, I know ninjutsu, but I am not part of any village. Oh, interesting. The old man grinned. How about I teach you something? Events. As the player, being lucky as well as unlucky goes hand in hand. Just leaving the house can lead to an event that leads to a fight or a learned skill. Sure. The kind old man smiled and pointed at his feet. This is what I will teach you. It's a chakra control exercise. You use too much chakra and it blew you back. Just push some chakra into your feet and try to walk on the tree. Too much and I will get blown away again, too low, and nothing will happen Naruto asked him with a smile. The kind old man chuckled and jumped down, turning around and leaving. Just keep practicing, you will get it. Chakra control. While walking unlocked. LV. Zero. Right, that means I have to use it to actually learn it. Naruto told himself, ignoring Kurama's chuckles. Stupid fox always making fun of him. Putting his foot onto the tree and slowly channeling his chakra into it. Yes the bark exploded at his cry. Noo. Backflipping he landed on his feet and chewed on his lower lip. Chakra control. While walking experience increased. This is gonna take some time. Chakra control. While walking LV. 1 reached. Chakra control increased. While walking maxed out. Suetin. Large projectile Naruto shouted again, water leaving his mouth rapidly and hitting a tree, breaking it in two. Nice. Naruto grinned and grabbed the sword on his side, he still didn't use it, and probably should. Standing in front of a tree he held the sword a bit back and held the hilt. What was that skill again? The Edo Naruto called, his body moving to obey the command, pulling out the sword, cutting into the tree, and returning it to the scabbard in only one second. Not fast enough to stop an enemy from using hand seals from a distance. Ha Naruto pumped his fist and looked happily at the deep cut the tree had. It wouldn't be enough to feel it, but it's faster than the Suiten Jutsu and should help. Hey, little swordsman. This is bad luck I guess. Naruto thought, looking to his left. His eyes met the other guys. Yeah you. My name is Marin, fight me. It's as if the moment their eyes met he was forced into the fight. The challenger has appeared. Accept the duel. Yes or no. Looking at the young adult in front of him he saw very bad gear, a sword on his back and a bored look on his face. His hair was similar to Shikamaru's, his eyes in a deep brown, though the bags under them made him look rather unmotivated. His armor was torn up in different places, but what was the most particular thing about him was the sword. It was used of course. Sure Naruto grinned and saw numbers appear around Marin. Marin, a swordsman. 1200 HP. 300 C. That guy seemed so weak. Hey I heard that Marin shouted, and Naruto realized he said that aloud. Sorry, sorry, let's just fight. The used sword was out of the scabbard faster than he could see. Naruto thought, blocking the sword with his own, but the technique is flawless. Grinning, Naruto blocked each strike and replaced his sword in the scabbard. The aid of the technique cut through the air and hit Marin's arm. Things end rather fast in actual battles. Not here though. Marin's HP reached below 50% and turned orange. You think such sloppy techniques can beat me Marin shouted, his face suddenly determined. The Edo. Experience increased. The Edo this time the strike was blocked, and Marin spun around, letting his sword drop and gripping it before striking with the other arm, all that before Naruto could sheath his sword again. His right shoulder was hit, luckily the cut was rather shallow because of the lack of power. Overhead Naruto didn't know why he shouted it, but he felt a slight increase in speed attacking with it. That's right, it's a skill, isn't it? Vertical strike Naruto hit Marin's hands and cut through a finger. The Edo Marin's sword pierced his shoulder the moment Naruto cut open his enemy's chest. The Edo. LV. 2 reached. Faster and stronger draw. Marin defeated. Achievement. First milestone win your first real battle. One permanent perk point. Hey, I don't know much about games, but shouldn't I get EXP or something? The game uses no level for NPCs or the player to make it harder to judge an enemy. Under 50 people with equal HP and chakra, one could still be better. The RGHHHHH, hey, you alright Naruto asked Marin on the floor. The battered swordsman stood up and glared at Naruto. You have beaten me. Your technique isn't as bad as I thought. Here, take this. Obtained equipment set light samurai armor. Hey dude, that's a bit much Marin was gone. Stupid events. I should move to avoid them. Menu. Inventory. Light samurai armor adds to the speed of kinjutsu and ninkinjutsu. Small armor bonus, plus 10 defense. Totally gonna equip that. Naruto nodded. The armor was of a simple design, a typical samurai armor without shoulder plates or greaves. Even the helmet was missing. But it was better than his current armor. My poor orange. Sadly the armor was in red. 
deal with it. Karama said, laughing in his mind. I remind you that I wore an orange jumpsuit when I kicked you, Naruto shouted. Small victories. Menu, quest. Naruto learned that shortcuts worked instead of seeking the relevant screen. Small victories. Drink quests. Wave join or defeat for money or to free the citizens of his rule. I guess that can wait a bit, Kanoha takes the mission on, and it's not like I have a chance against Abusa by myself. If there was a stat for actual intelligence he would have gained it right there. But a player character is nothing without the player, and as such only as smart as him. I feel as if someone just said something terribly rude. Akatsuki a mysterious organism. Yeah, right, I will be dead next. Junin exams be in Kanoha for Chunin exam finals to continue this quest. This is going to take some time though. In Shuriki of one meets Sabaku no Gara. Fury Civil War joined Yagura to Rumi Mei in the Civil War and help them against the opposing site. Ah. I can't choose which to do first. Wasn't Yagura supposed to be controlled by Madara right now Naruto gripped his hair and glared at the quest list. This thing updated when I thought about where I could help, right? What about the other Jinchuriki? Those need to be warned. Quest. Yagura's purge find out the truth about Yagura's control under Ichiha Madara. Quest. Akatsuki updated optional objective. Search for the other Jinchuriki and warn them of Akatsuki. Hell yes Naruto grinned, hitting the quest and watching an arrow appear out of nowhere. Quest markers appear when you choose a quest as the main focus. They point you to the general area of the target, but never to the target itself. If the target wishes to be hidden, the general area spreads much further. From the direction of the arrow it pointed clearly at the land of lightning. The place with two Jinchuriki not hated by their village, for their control. Objectives. Killer B and Nai Yujito. Jinchuriki of 8 and Jinchuriki of 2 respectively. Onwards to Kumo. Humming some senseless tune, Naruto sped through the trees and watched the forest thinning out. To reach Kumagakur he would need to go through the land of hot water and the land of frost. The land of frost where they lost the battle. DCH Naruto wasn't happy about this game. But it gave him a chance. But right now. He needed sleep. He was on his feet for hours and just in front of him was Yugakur. A place to rest. Of course he was at his apartment to get everything he had before leaving, it's not like he was that stupid. It's not like he has much stuff, actually. He just realized he didn't have any source of income either. Knew at least he had enough to sleep a night here, which should be enough time to reach Kumo going full speed. But as he was about to go to sleep he heard strange whispers. Did you hear about the bandit camps near the village a voice said from outside of his room. Many Yugakur ninja weren't happy about their forced retirement and joined their ranks. It's not like Yugakur had any strong ninja, Basama another voice chuckled. Yes, of course, but someone trained as a ninja could easily take down a whole bandit group, let alone a village the old woman sounded worried, I would pay for some ninja and Kumo to get rid of them, but they charge too much as neighboring countries. Quest available. The bandits of Yugakur defeat the bandits of Yugakur to get loot and pay. Throwing open the door, Naruto grinned at the two coincidentally standing women in front of it. I will take care of them for as much as you are ready to pay. My, my, thank you young man. Typical game logic dictates that no one will wonder why exactly you would do that when you were obviously no ninja. Quest accepted. The bandits of Yugakur. But first Naruto turned around, shutting the door and throwing himself at the bed. Sleep. For dramatic effect Naruto was up rather early and sat waiting on a tree branch near one of the bandit camps. Scouting wasn't something he was good at, but he could see the five men and one woman with scratched out forehead protectors. Strangely all of them just had Nukunin as their name, while the bandits were just named Bandit. Unimportant characters weren't named it seems. They all had less HP than him, but that was probably because he had his Yuzumaki body and Kurama. He couldn't just depend on that alone. But one thing Naruto realized, he loved this sword. Simply because it looked cool when he used it. And hey, maybe he can learn some Kinjutsu in Kumo. He just needed to find some event, it's not like he can ask and just learn it from someone there. Suspected spy isn't something he wants to add to his list of titles. Attacking an unaware enemy always does more damage than coming from the front. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Naruto muttered distastefully. Pulling out a few kunai he got, he threw the first one at one of the bandits. There weren't many and their HP was laughable, so the bandit just fell and, wait, was he dead? The hit bandit stayed motionless on the ground. Ah uh, Naruto never killed, not on purpose that is. It just wasn't his nature. But it's for a greater good, isn't it? Shinobi were tools, and if you wielded yourself to the fullest potential you could save your allies. Skill. Kunai experience gained. That's probably somewhere I didn't look. Of course I know how to throw kunai and shuriken. Three other kunai took out the other bandits that stood outside. Sadly the ninja realized rather fast what was happening. Luckily he wasn't an idiot. 
he really wasn't. He had some cage bunch and spread out and threw kunai out of every direction to split them up. The ones he had to deal with were a rather bulky looking man and a woman who looked like she was the leader of the group. Is that an eye patch? Naruto asked loudly. How can you be some no-name enemy when you have an eye patch? It's a symbol of strength to fight and lose one. The woman didn't answer. You don't really have much of a personality, do you? No answer. He gripped his sword. The Edo he shouted out and attacked the bulky man first, his strike was blocked and the man's HP went down only by a very small amount and he was kicked by the woman right after that. Thanking piece of SH. They expected his technique. The quick draw was fast enough to make most ninja turn green in envy, but these two, while having low HP. 3000 C together. They still couldn't quite understand how exactly 3000 chakra translated into skill, but these two were stronger than the average nin. Too strong. Page Bunch and No Jutsu 5 clones were created and gathered around him. His HP went down by quite a bit and he should probably avoid getting it again. What's lacking in their personality they have in skills. Overhead two clones shouted, while two others did the vertical strike. The strikes were blocked again, but this time his enemies were separated and he could follow up. The Edo to spam his fastest or strongest technique is always a player's best chance to win. Who cares about honor? And again the strike was blocked. This man was stronger than the woman. His clones were battered aside and dispelled. Jumping backwards Naruto clapped his hands together. Suiten. Large projectile Naruto used his only elemental jutsu and shot it at him, but the bulky man jumped over it. Now the two clones distracting the woman quickly jumped backwards, and while one blocked her attempt to lunge at the real him, the other stabbed his clone blade right through the bulky man's back. Or so he thought, a log appeared out of nowhere, and the man stood behind him, punching him. Skill. Precision strike, passive, unlocked. Precision strike your eyes can perceive the weakest points of your enemy, trying to go in between the ribs from behind and going for soft tissue. At least something. The clone that tried distracting the woman was destroyed just as easily. And Naruto came to a full stop right in front of her. Well hell. Kawarimi was really helpful when actually used. Appearing behind the tree he used as lookout before he quickly formed another bunch of clones. Too far away for Iedo Naruto thought, his hands coming together too before he hit his stomach. His clones follow suit. Suiten large projectile. Pain. Great fireball the woman did have a voice, it seems, and her fireball hit the tree, burning it a bit before Naruto's half a dozen clones hit her with their projectiles. Her wide-eyed look was the last thing he saw of her before she was sent into a tent quite some distance away. Skill. Suetin. Large projectile leveled up, LV.2, chakra cost lessened, strength of the technique rose. The man was left standing. 2200, HP. I me the man shouted loudly. You nonsense. Doton. Earth Dragon. Ah shit. His clones were destroyed, and his HP sank down to half. Hey, a bit of help, Kurama. That drunk on it, and I won't help you. His eyes turned red, the whiskers on his cheeks becoming darker. In Shuriki form. Version 1 unlocked. Higher speed. He dodged a punch thrown at his face, barely. Stronger regeneration his HP was nearly full again. And did his chakra bar turn red? Yes. Suetin. Large, projectile. The technique was overloaded, he was thrown back, but even the earth barrier his enemy threw up wasn't strong enough to hold it. The red-coated water stream hit the man and threw him to the ground. The Edo. Naruto's echoing voice cut through the clearing, and he appeared directly over the enemy. This time the strike wasn't blocked, it cut through the whole man and left a trail of blood on the floor, and after wiping the blood he placed it back in the scabbard. The mentality of a gamer, no remorse for no-name enemies. It seems the other four ninja weren't that special, his clones could easily sneak up on them and backstab them, which means those two came after him personally, because they knew he was real. Of course, Naruto didn't quite realize he had fought in a war just two days or so ago. His readiness to be ruthless and to fight enemies stronger, more talented or generally smarter than him had sharpened him. Where the two he fought were strong, yet unnamed characters in a game he is allowed to play to save his friends. The Edo Naruto rushed through the steam and cut the woman across her stomach. Luckily, instead of innards spreading outwards she disappeared with a cry. Quest, complete. The bandits of Yugaku your skills have surpassed those of your enemies. Your reputation in the land of hot springs has risen. Returning to the woman had been somewhat strange. He got some money for sure, and even a recommendation where to bring his sword for repairs. What he didn't expect was her giving him an axe. It was an axe. He used a katana and ninjutsu. Of course, typical games generally give you rarely the weapon you want when you complete a quest. Nice thing is you can sell it. Which he did. And how he paid for his repairs without losing any money from the reward. I think I can live with it he muttered on his way towards the land of frost. 
This better not led to another event, got more important stuff to do. So hand over that loot to me, you oughta call me Killer B. Now, Naruto wasn't sure what he expected when he was halfway through the land of lightning. Keep it bright, man. See the light, man. Or else you are gonna have a fight, man. So Naruto forgot how cool Killer B could be. He didn't expect to meet him right outside of the village with his team, pointing at him, declaring him to be a Jinchuriki, and then rapping. He also didn't expect him to ask, right? For some loot. What are you, some highwayman Naruto shouted, pointing back with a scowl. I'm here to warn the rakage. Not like we can believe your word, Blondie Dot the big girl called Samui said. Look who's talking, Naruto grumbled, pulling out a ladle and throwing it to B, who caught it easily. I like him, he's got style, and he shared some loot with me and mine killer B wrapped. If you could call it that. He gave you a ladle the dark-skinned boy Amoy called out, his fingers gripping deeply into his face. What if it is some kind of distraction for a seal that can absorb chakra so fast to become it? The ladle was taken by the redeed of the group, Kerry, who hit Amoy mid-speech, sending him flying. Huh, that this is actually useful. Of course it is, I got it from a smith that couldn't give me any nice weapons. The land of frost was rather barren and not that great of a place to stay. He had one event where he helped some blacksmith transport a few crates, and he got a ladle. A ladle with the strength of a mace. Look Naruto sighed, my name is Yuzumaki Naruto, as your sensei there said, I am the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi. An enemy Jinchuriki has a pure Amoy meets ladle, again. Look Naruto pulled out his papers. Allowed by the Hokage, I don't want to be a ninja for Konoha, they don't like me. So you want to join our village Kari asked, looking him up and down. You don't really look like a ninja, more like a samurai really. This armor? I got it from some one of swordsmen who challenged me. He was good, but not that good. Naruto boasted. Of course, I got it from a one of swordsman sounded more like he took it from his dead cold hands. Ah, Killer B, what do you know of Akatsuki? Red clouds on black cloaks, I haven't heard M-U-C-H he couldn't stop. At least the gifted ladle made him happy, kind of. A hunch in Chiriki dot that made the team turn serious, what they want, I can't say, but they are gathering all nine. He couldn't say it because he didn't actually know. What he knows is the warning of the Hokage. Their ranks consist of s rank criminals, either out of skill or crime. Naruto continued, his hands going to his documents again and turning them around. The Sandaim Hokage gave me a warning when he allowed me to leave, I think it's to keep me moving and safe from them. I wanted to warn the others. Naruto wasn't a deceitful person. He lied a few times to get out of some situations, but he wouldn't betray anyone's trust. Especially not his comrades. Not that they knew. They forgot about him like Konoha. But it seems his charisma check worked, and all of them nodded. We will believe you if you follow us and hand over your katana. Samui declared, stepping forward. He nodded and gave it to her, before grabbing his kunai pouch. No need, I don't know how skilled you are with the sword, but you won't be able to hurt the rakage when you need to grab a kunai from the pouch. Ah, right, that guy was fast Naruto said, remembering his short fight with the Yandane rakage. B's team looked at him as if he was some idiot for not knowing that. Let's go Kerry shouted, grabbing Amboy who was unconscious from the repeated hits. The team moved towards Kumagakur again, this time with Naruto. Are you actually any good with this thing? Oh no, Naruto paled. How could you say that? You are going to summon them. Summon new. Events. Like a loud explosion was heard and directly in front of them appeared Marin. What are you doing here? Marin looked differently. His sword was shinier, his armor replaced by a jade green outfit. Furthermore, he didn't look as bored as he did before. Yuzumaki Naruto. Did I ever tell you my name? I have come to fight you, my rival Marin declared loudly. I just met you two days ago Naruto shouted back at him. Hey, give my sword. Naruto didn't wait for her to do it, he just took it and strapped it to his side again. He had learned that mentioning things in passing could lead to events rather easily. Things like are you strong? Or I wonder if there are any bandits. The challenger has appeared. Accept the duel. Yes or no. I will fight you, but leave me alone after this. I expected nothing else from my rival Marin smiled broadly. He didn't even listen to the last part Naruto sighed. Marin, a samurai. 2000 HP. 500 C. You got stronger, a eh? Naruto grinned despite himself. If he appeared more often, he could train his kenjutsu on him. But he realized he needed to train his suit and more. If he couldn't do that he would fail against enemies that knew how to handle a swordsman. Dodging a blow from the left, Naruto tried to stab Marin's arm. Hey, where did you get your finger fixed? Don't make me laugh, any swordsman that knows how to cut off a finger, knows how to fix them up again. Not like that'll help if I take your arm Naruto said, stepping forward slightly and blocking Marin's sword by the hilt with his left arm. Quickly replacing the sword in his scabbard he jumped back again and gripped the hilt. 
the Edo but this time, Marin copied him, and he realized. Marin's Edo was as fast and strong as his, he had trained these last two days, and if anyone knows how fast dedicated training can bring you forward, it's Naruto. Boy, you copycat despite his words, Naruto sounded more amused than anything. He wondered if he could have had that with Sasuke years ago. Use your own techniques. Naruto jumped backwards to prepare another strike, and Marin stood, his legs spread and the sword pointed at him. Marin's hilt was held right besides his head while the sword pointed forward. I can't go forward, he will cut me up, Naruto realized. Right now, he could try Iedo through Marin's defense, but his enemy was prepared for that. The moment I hurt him, I would lose an arm, or worse. And so Naruto smiled. This was fun. Do you think we should help him carry commented as the two swordsmen ran at each other. And why isn't he using any jutsu? He has pride in his blade killer B commented, like a ninja he has to sneak up on them quicker, with his finger on a trigger like, like he's drawing a sword. This is combat, man, this is war. Who are you calling man carry was about to jump him when Samui stopped her. His sword, he doesn't carry it long, but he has experience Samui explained, furthermore, didn't you hear? It's not the first time they fought. Maybe he would see it as dishonor. And Naruto realized something too. This stance wasn't as perfected as his other techniques. What did you tell me the last time? Naruto prepared his blade and ran at Marin, you will never beat me with a technique as sloppy as this. I didn't word it like that Marin shouted, turning around his sword and bringing it down far faster than the stance let on. But Naruto just rolled forward, the sword cutting a bit of his hair. Before Marin could do anything, Naruto's hilt found one of the few places he could hit without blade, between the legs. Forget what I said, this boy has as much honor as a shinobi. Samuel sighed. Not cool. Pillar B winced and envied Amoy for being unconscious. This was brutal. Combat, man, this is a war of two unflinching wills. I Marin shouted, lying on the floor with his hand trying to protect whatever remained of his crotch. Marin defeated. Obtained Kinjutsu scroll This scroll holds a few techniques for Kinjutsu. Before Naruto could comment on it, Marin disappeared again. Only this time Marin was visible as he ran. I will get you next time. I didn't know a guy could have such a high voice, Naruto commented. Well, Blondie, you got skill carry grinned. We have to spar sometime. Sure, whatever, can we get to the village before more come Naruto threw his sword to Samui and turned to the large mountain they would have to climb to reach Kumo. Hey, wait. If you aren't with us you get into trouble carry run with him, still holding Amoy still form while sliding him through the dirt. God no, there are two of them, Samui sighed. Not cool at all, let's go be sensei. Pillar B was distracted though. His hand holding his small book he began scribbling some notes. At the beat of a samurai, ninja can't reach it, if something stands in your way, you don't need ninjutsu to beat it. It seems Killer B found interest in samurai. Sensei Samui called out. We need to go. Ahahaha <laughs> Karui laughed at Naruto's stories. They were only stories of course, nothing to do with plot relevant happenings. But a sensei who wears a mask behind a mask to prank his students. Yeah yeah, laugh it up, you should have seen our reactions. Naruto muttered. Nobody knows what he looks like under that mask. Except those that see him eat, and even that he does so fast you can blink and miss it. Alt A Kumo Nin stood in front of him. I need a way of identification. He's a resigned ninja of Kanoha Samui explained as he pulled out his papers. He has some information for the rakage, and he gave us his sword to show he didn't mean any harm. Are you sure? I heard an explosion a few minutes ago. Yes, it was by this guy's rival here Kerry pointed at him. And he totally. Pillar B clamped his hand over her mouth. Do not repeat that, let's just say he beat that. And why is Amoy unconscious the gate guard asked, his headache increasing. This awesome guy right here gave me a new weapon carry, freed from Killer B's hand, called out. She brought out the ladle. Amoy woke up at that moment and jumped back, behind his sensei and pointed at it. I told you it was dangerous. See, and Yuzumaki. Seal masters, he probably made it impossible to break Amoy shouted frantically. Yuzumaki Naruto the other gate guard asked. Did you scribble nine tails in Shuriki here? Yay, he already knows, so I guess if I am open about it, people wouldn't wonder what I have to hide. Naruto's logic may sound good, but it's doubtful many people will trust him. Do you want to join our village? Stop asking me. I like being free excuse of every bad missing nin ever. Just go, please. Before he begins as if jinxing it, B began to rap. Do the impossible, see the invisible, Roro. Go. Your ninja are awfully pushy. Naruto commented. Only when Sensei is involved, Samui said, stretching. Naruto didn't ever look at her properly. Which could mean two things he had more control than others, or he didn't like women. The first is doubtful, he's too impulsive. Now, if he knew what she thought, he would loudly deny it, but because he didn't, a rumor could easily spread. 
Of course she didn't know that fighting for the sake of the world can take thoughts of romance out. Not that beauty had anything to do with romance. Not that Naruto actually realized it himself. Gamagakur was quite different compared to Konoha. It was on the top of a mountain right above the clouds, and many buildings were built into them. The village didn't have that homey feeling Konoha had, but it was a class all on its own. The Rakage Tower, if it could be called such, was a gigantic blue thing between two mountains. The Ii Naruto heard from above them, one of the windows in the tower exploding outwards before A came jumping out. Why are you so late? The Rakage was like his brother, a tall dark-skinned man. And giant muscles. His pale blonde hair was combed back, and he had a small mustache and goatee. Hey, Ro, you see we were distracted, but we came here as so. Shut up the Rakage shouted again, a lack of indoor voice present. Samui. We met Yuzumaki Naruto here halfway, he is the Kaiubi Jinchuriki, and here to warn us about an organization that hunts for the Bijuu. Samui explained hastily. Better not provoke the Rakage more. Yu looked irritated by something before grabbing Naruto's face and pulling on his cheeks. You look like the Yandame Hokage. Crash writes Naruto got out and freed his face from the Rakage. I'm his son. The game couldn't really stop him when someone else mentioned it. What even B was surprised. And what's the reason you brought a Kanoha Shin Naruto cut him off, showing him his papers. Gahahaha. The Yandame Hokage's son is resigning. That's gold. Hey. No, I don't want to join. Naruto sighed. They ask already, I am here to warn you. Rakage Sama they heard a voice and some steps. I told you to use the door. The repair costs for the window every week are stacking up. Ah, the Rakage looked slightly embarrassed. Slightly. This is Mabui, she's my assistant. Like many Kumagaka residents she had dark skin and strangely silver hair that reminded him of Kakashi. Let's get up to my office. The Rakage didn't use the door again. For the others it took a bit longer to reach the upper floor. What is this about Akatsuki the Rakage asked him. Akatsuki, red clouds, black cloaks. Mercenaries to gather money, but their actual goal is the Bijuu. Naruto answered him. I don't know who their members might be, but all of them are supposed to be on par with the cage. HMPH the Rakage wasn't impressed, and as far as Naruto heard, he wasn't much different the last time. He seems a bit calmer now that no war looms over them, but without Killer B being taken, he has no reason to care. I don't really care if you believe me, or if you are taking the threat seriously Naruto told him honestly, but if your brother is taken, I know you will fight. Killer B can take care of himself A told him. I thank you for the warning though, you are allowed to stay in the village for the meantime. The Anvil will watch you. Visited two of the five great villages. You've been awfully quiet, haven't you? Naruto nodded. The Rakage accepted that and dismissed him. He, someone wanna spar with me? I'll take you on Kerry shouted, his eyes looking as if they were glowing. No ladle Naruto honestly regretted giving that to them. It's bees either way. Before B could begin to rap, A grabbed his whole head with one hand and growled. You fool B was thrown against a wall, to the displeasure of Mabui who just made another note in a small book. Don't you have to debrief or something Naruto asked Kerry when they reached some empty training ground. Damn that's a lot of rocks. We are on a mountain, idiot. Kerry told him. We are lucky that we are high enough to avoid snow. Dunno how that works exactly. The challenger has appeared. Accept the duel. Yes or no? Yeah, sure, let's just fight. No. Screw this, I'm a ninja. Perry of Kumagakur. 2000 HP. 900 C. She is, her chakra is rather high. Suetan. Large projectile Naruto began to give her no chance to counter her own jutsu. Sadly, she was better than that and jumped to the side before stabbing the scabbard of her sword into the ground and using it to change her direction towards him. Filler B's student, he reminded himself. Kumurai. Front beheading he heard her shout, and her sword was far faster than any of Marin's techniques. Pulling his own sword he blocked the strike barely and waited, why did he only have 2000 HP? During a spar the HP are set equal to make sure no one is seriously hurt. Does that mean she usually has more HP? Is every person he meets some kinda monster? Now he couldn't put the sword into its scabbard for an Iedo. She was too fast and... Right? Swallow her sword came from above, not thrown but kicked by her knee as she did a front flip, stopping on both of her hands and then spinning around, reaching for a kick. She wanted him to jump, he could see, if he stepped back he would get hit, if he jumped, the sword would pierce him, if she managed to kick him he would be on the floor. Awarimi Naruto got out at the last moment, but Kerry wasn't finished and grabbed the sword mid-air. She was smart. Not close to Shikamaru, but she had tactics. And he did not. Page Bunshin no Jutsu three clones stood in front of her, all with their own swords. Hiedo. The three clones rushed at her, forcing her to block. Naruto himself smiled widely. Fun. Much more fun than Marin. Suetan. 
large projectile the distracted Carrie was hit, but his clones were taken with her, and she was thrown against a wall, too wet to use any close range rain. Alright, that's enough. The spar was broken up. Ba Carrie stood up and glared at the interruption, Derry San. Barry Naruto asked. The guy with the cool black lightning and storm release. And what a cool sword. That reminded him of Zabuza. The rakage's right hand man Kerry told him, why did you interrupt our spar, Derry San? Naruto needs to see the place he stays for now, you can spar later on. Derry told them. You could have waited until the end both Naruto and Kerry shouted. I don't have all the time in the world and Naruto isn't someone you could just give to any ninja. Derry sighed. I feel like I'm some object, Naruto muttered. Did Amoy tell you something? You shouldn't listen to him, I'm good. Barry sighed again. The Eos Naruto ran through his new room. Which was a big room, no kitchen or something but a bed and a window and a fridge. There's a bathroom too, don't bother hiding something there, we would know. That sounded really weird, Derry san. Naruto said dryly. Yeah, whatever, enjoy your stay. Derry left. Now that Kerry went to her team and he had his nice room, Naruto pulled out the scroll he got from Marin. There were only three techniques in, one even Suiten. Suiten Kenjutsu. Crushing Blade. Infusing the blade with water takes the cutting power, but increases crushing power to destroy weapons or handle enemies with less lethal force. Oh, that's nice. Suiten Kenjutsu. Crushing Blade learned. LV.0. Zigzag Snipe. Holding the blade close to the floor, use your other hand to change directions while pulling it up. Naruto read. That sounds really easy, it doesn't sound any faster than normal. Kenjutsu. Zigzag Snipe learned. LV.0. Okay, to the last, that's the technique he used, wasn't it? Counter blade, that sounds boring. Hold the blade on your eye level while pointing the tip at your enemy and the hilt next to your head yeah, that's the stance. Naruto muttered to himself. Point the tip at the enemy's sword and cut along its blade to hit him. I don't get it. Ninjutsu. Counter blade learned. LV.0. Now I need some place to practice them. A few hours later he could use all three techniques more or less well. What confused him though was something else. After reaching LV. 2 and large projectile and Yato it became much harder leveling them. Maybe I should use Cage Bunshin. Greater men could train their whole lives and reach a pinnacle of skill that would be impossible to reach for the untalented. Does that mean I'm not allowed to cheat? Yes. Idiot. Who are you talking to, kid that was Nayujito, right? Ah, no one this better not be another event. The Rakage told me to get you. Nice wordplay, by the way. Yujito complimented. Thanks. Naruto said it probably wasn't. Not some no-name ninja telling him about some old lady who fell from a tree or something. We decided that we couldn't just trust you Mabui explained to Naruto, so we want you to take a mission with Yujito here, if you complete it for us you can enter the village as a guest whenever you want. That was too easy. But trust missions and reputation and all that were part of the game right? This is an event. Naruto screamed in his head, Kurama snored. Hey you dumb fox, what are you doing? I'm trying to sleep, wake me when something interesting happens. I accept, what are we supposed to do? Due to Kano has increased border patrols since a certain situation, we had problems conducting diplomacy. Shimagakur and the former Yugakur are allies of ours Mabu elaborated on the situation, the Rakage just sat signing some papers. It looked like without her the village would break apart, we just barely got the official agreement from the land of rice fields to travel through it and reach to Kigakur. We wish for you to join Yujito in protecting the appointed diplomat. Quest. Takigakur's trouble join Yujito on her way to Takigakur and help. That sounds like something bad will happen, but sure. Accepted quest. Takigakur's trouble. Maybe I can meet few then. That would be three of the eight Jinchuriki he had to warn. Yujito probably heard it already. Who are we protecting and when are we supposed to leave Naruto asked, his arms crossed. The rakage pointed at a grinning blonde man who stood behind him. So you are Kanoha's little pet, hm what's his name asked, the smirk on his face already provoking. Well that's my origin, I'm no more their pet than you are smart Naruto felt a wave of chakra wash over the room, slightly. You are a sensor, tell me what you think. Stop this at once Mabui sighed, we don't have time for this. But both C and Naruto were shut up by a glare before looking at each other and turning their heads away from each other. HMPH. Isn't he supposed to be the mature one Derry commented and sighed. Since that boy appeared everything around the village became strange. There were a lot of small problems, but instead of asking for dear rank help, they seemed to wait for someone. They didn't know it was Naruto they were waiting for, trying to surprise him with events. The way out of the village was hell. A woman on the right asking him if could gather herbs for some soup, another woman needing help with her groceries, promising some rumors she heard. Naruto's life was hard. When he could just smash a Rasengan into someone's face and end the fight, that was when life was easy. 
when he could just use a thousand clones to learn a technique in five hours, that was when life was easy. Instead he trained his quick draw the whole way. Can you stop pulling out that sword every few seconds he growled. It's annoying. You don't really like Konoha, do you Naruto asked him, and with another silent Iedo pulled the sword, cut and replaced it in the scabbard. The Iedo experience increased. Finally. It seems it only increased when he made significant improvement. Nine years ago, Konoha killed my older brother. C spat. He was on a diplomatic mission for the Sandane Rakage, and all they returned was his corpse. That made Naruto stumble. The Hyuga clan. The Hyuga affair, wasn't it Naruto said. From what I've heard, he tried to kidnap the heiress. That's a lie C wasn't as playful as he was before. The third Rakage told me, he was assassinated by the Hyuga clan, and as a way to pay for their crime, they were to send the corpse of the murderer. The Ashi Hyuga, hmm. And because they sent someone they declared themselves guilty, but if they didn't there would be war Naruto commented. Don't twist the facts. The Hyuga clan is a clan of murderers, and Konoha protected them, sending the twin brother, C growled, stopping. Yujito just watched from the sidelines. And you, the Yandame Hokage's son. If daddy hadn't died, maybe things would have been different and prevented that old fool Sirotobi from failing, ha. Huh? C was a jonin. One who frequently trains with Derry and has the Rakage's utmost trust, or at least enough to be sent as diplomat. He was both a sensor and a medic min, and had exceptionally high ability in Jinjutsu and Drayton. But when he fell Kyubi's chakra, it was still too late and Naruto's first impact on his face. The glare he sent, the red eyes made him swallow slightly. C realized Naruto was dangerous. Not that skilled, not enough to beat him, but with Kaiubi backing him up. That's enough, both of you. Yujito said, jumping between Naruto and the still down C. She was more dangerous than Naruto. Full control of her biju. Naruto snarled again and released his grip from the hilt of his katana. C was healing his face already, and Yujito nodded at both. I'm surprised you idiots managed to last until the land of rice fields. The speed at which they were going was unreal, only C's constant training, and Yujito's and Naruto's high stamina allowed them to hold it. The earlier they reached Ikigakur the better. There were rumors of war. Aye, you made one mistake, Lady. Naruto's eyes widened at the forehead protector of the stranger that suddenly appeared. This isn't the land of rice fields anymore. It's the land of sound ten other men appeared suddenly and threw kunai connected with exploding tags at them. The Togakur, how could I forget? Quest. A Togakur learn more about a Togakur. Page bunch and no jutsu a shield of about 20 clones was enough for them to stop all kunai. C, who finally managed to think a bit more clearly after the hit, formed hand seals as fast as he could. Raten jinjutsu. Flash pillar. Ijido closed her eyes, and Naruto imitated her. After hearing the enemy ninja cry out both opened their eyes again and saw them turning on each other. Only two of the eleven men could free themself. The Edo Naruto's eyes were wide as he cut through one of the ninja under the Jinjutsu. Yujito let her claws grow wide and ran at the one that appeared first, while C took on the other one that wasn't under the illusion. The Edo experience gained. Nothing beats real fights, he Naruto laughed, dodging a stray kunai thrown by C's enemy. Hey, take care with that. Shut up C shouted, the distraction of actually fighting broke the Jinjutsu on the four remaining men Naruto couldn't get rid of fast enough. Throwing himself to the floor, Naruto barely dodged a barrage of shuriken. Luckily Yujito was just finished with her opponent and turned to the four nin. Help see, Naruto san. Yujito ordered, her eyes turning cat-like. I have to deal with this trash. Sure Naruto formed a clone, and both split up to flank C's opponent. Need help, wannabe. Ah, as if I needed C shouted, blocking his enemy's kunai with his own. A Togaker ninja weren't that talented, but what they lacked in skill they had in numbers. Common Jonin could have problems, it would take someone on Asuma's or maybe Kakashi's level to get rid of all of them. Without too much damage, two Jinchuriki were able to leave their enemies alive for interrogation. Naruto and his clone appeared above and below the Odonin. Overhead strike. Zigzag, snipe. An arm and a leg were gone, and before the ninja could even cry out in pain, C's hand hit his neck and knocked him out before he healed the wounds. We need to interrogate him, idiot, don't go for the kill. If I wanted to kill him I would have cut off his head, idiot. Yujido's eye interrupted them. Still, thanks. C muttered. Ah, no problem. Sorry about that. Naruto apologized. Quest completed. A Togaker. Apparently Orochimaru was in Sunagaka right now, taking care of some business that had to do with Takigakur. The enemy couldn't mention Orochimaru's name, he only said, leader but Naruto knew who it was. Maybe we should skip a night's sleep. Yujito said. It seems the situation is more dire when they were supposed to stop us here. They knew we would have sneaked across the border if they didn't allow us to travel through. Yes. Naruto and C nodded. The Kigakur was visible from afar. 
Let's rephrase that. Takugakur was a true hidden village. To find it, one would have to meet at a designated spot with their ninja and be brought there with their eyes closed. But Takugakur was in flames, and Naruto knew that this shouldn't have happened. Or rather, the information he had about Takugakur were simple. Shibuki became its leader after his father sacrificed himself to stop. The foreign power. Naruto muttered, making C and Yujito turn to him. He began to read a bit about it, and the game didn't seem to stop him from sharing knowledge not considered important for the flow of it. He couldn't say Orochimaru's name, not knowing he was the leader of Odo. But he could say things that many people know. Takigakur is more or less famous for its hero water, it increases your power at the exchange of your lifespan. Not something Orochimaru would have much interest in, which means they must be attacked by someone else. It's probably Kusagakur Yujito deduced, Atagakur's leader probably uses this attack as a way to sneak into their village, while their main force is gone. So this is probably the fight where Shibuki's father dies. And Takigakur wasn't allied with Kumo his time around, which probably means that Shibuki never signed the treaty. We have to hurry Naruto said, if the village leader dies, that's it with the treaty. Right C shouted, speeding up. The night's sleep they skipped didn't seem to bother him too much, a soldier pill, and everything was alright. Akigakur's trouble updated Sunagakur is attacking Taki. Join Yujito and C in helping the village to gain Kumo's trust. I'm not doing that for Kumo Naruto told himself mentally, this is so a child doesn't lose his father. Naruto fraught a bunch of genin around him, his HP down to half already. This didn't look good, but that also meant that Shibuki's father didn't take the hero water already. Where was Fuu? Right, from what he heard, Fuu didn't like Taki, or humans in general. Though she did seem happy around the Bijuu and other Jinchuriki. It's worth a try at least. My name is Uzumaki Naruto he shouted loudly, maybe causing havoc, my father is Namaki's Minato. This made some people stop, those that didn't believe him ignored his shout, those that did see him realized how similar they looked. And he grinned, even if he didn't want to depend on him, his eyes turned red, the Jinchuriki of Kaiubi. That did make many people look into his direction. Most Jonin were probably briefed on the dangers of other nations, and Uzumaki Naruto as Jinchuriki was a hard fact. His increased speed helped him with the no-name genin of Kusa, but he realized there were some strong drug dodonin in between them, probably Orochimaru's way of making sure Kusa would attack. The Edo Naruto cut through two kunai that nearly hit him and quickly ran closer to the center of the village. Boss. But Naruto's eyes widened. Bosses are strong enemies that are hard to beat alone. They can range from very strong ninja to village leaders to legends with high bounties in bingo books. And the reason he had no name was because he wore an anvil mask and a cloak with hood to hide any features. But Naruto realized who it was, even if the game didn't tell, those chakra scalpel were too obvious. Ikushi Kabuto. Oh, I didn't expect someone like you to be here. Kabuto's voice was a bit distorted of course. Not like you can stop me. Right, even if Orochimaru had no actual use for the hero water, he could still research it and maybe copy the effect without backlash. Boss. 6000 HP. 3000 C. The Edo Naruto's blade was stopped by Kabuto's hand right close to his throat, having caught it with his superb control. Idiot, this is someone on Kakashi's level, and his healing body. He Naruto recognized the voice. The person that saved his hand from being cut off by a chakra scalpel by kicking Kabuto with both legs landed beside him. Need help, Yuzumaki Naruto. Who are you Naruto asked grinning. Call me Fuu, buddy, Jinchuriki of Lucky Number 7 Fuu was just as he remembered her, though a bit smaller luckily he knew not to mention that. That guy there, he's strong. Naruto said, think you can help. Sure. Fuu another voice shouted, turning around, and Naruto saw a man he didn't recognize. Thank you. The last part was mumbled. In the man's hand there was the hero water. Shibuki's father. Hey, I'm not helping you at all. Fuu turned away from him. I'm helping my bro over there. Fuu was a bit of a tomboy though, he wondered why Kabuto didn't yet attack. Maybe that's the pre-fight banter of bosses. The Kigakur's trouble updated. Optional objective protect Shibuki's father before he has to take the hero water. Optional my foot Naruto turned back to Kabuto, just as Fuu formed hand seals. I will save him. Close your eyes. Fuu whispered and opened her mouth wide and breathed out. Secret technique. Hiding in scale powder. He closed his eyes fast, trying to avoid being hit by that technique again. It was bad the first time around. Kabuto growled as he gripped his eyes, not having heard the silent command of Fu. Both used it to their advantage, Fu leaving into the air with two wings sprouting out, and Naruto sprinting full speed at their enemy. The Edo Naruto's attack cut a deep wound into Kabuto's arm, and his HP sank to 5700. But a quick flash and his chakra sank to 2850 before the wound was fully healed again. 
Dropkicky grabbed Hugh's leg and threw her behind him, but didn't expect her to change direction suddenly and kicked him in the back. Before Naruto could stab his sword at Kabuto, he was replaced with a log. His wounds heal as fast as we can make them. Naruto told her. But his chakra is getting lower every time, the worse the wound the more chakra it takes. But going few said, behind you. Spinning around, Naruto prepared his sword. Suiten Kenjutsu. Crushing blade. He just so managed to hit Kabuto's chakra blade and heard a crack of bones breaking. 6000 HP, 2700 C. But one thing Naruto realized besides that. Kabuto was too easy. Or is it just him becoming so good? His teamwork with Fu. I have to kill him so he can't revive the army. Naruto told himself, without Kabuto, everything would be easier. Age bunch and no jutsu. Kabuto said, creating two clones, all with chakra scalpels. That jutsu is starting to really piss me off. Naruto shouted, his sword returning to its scabbard. Cage bunch and no jutsu. Twenty clones. Too many, and he would stand in his own way. The eight of the first ten rushed to Kabuto, while Fu prepared herself behind the real Kabuto. The rest followed a few seconds later. The first clone took down all of them before it was dispelled. Fu, take the other clone. She nodded and distracted the more skilled enemy's clone, while Naruto once again rushed to Kabuto. His first strike was parried, his second strike too. Trying to hit Kabuto's legs ended with him jumping over his back, and trying the zigzag snipe wasn't fast enough before he was kicked in the back. Suiten. Large projectile Naruto's attack hit the floor and sent him into the air, Fu. Fu once again blinded her enemy, which helped her take the clone down, before she rapidly rose into the air and grabbed Naruto. If I take his head, he won't regenerate. She just nodded and spun him around before throwing him as hard as she could. Closing in on the floor he prepared the sword and just cut. Of course it couldn't be that easy Naruto thought, seeing his blade stopping right where Kabuto's spine would be, close to the next middle. You little shit at least Kabuto was in pain, 2000 HP, 1500 C, he couldn't heal as easily anymore. And with a snap, Kabuto punched Naruto's blade close to the hilt, splitting the sword into an unusable state. Suiten. Water blade Fu once again saved him, her blade cutting less than his through his neck. 500 HP. He couldn't heal when the blade was still stuck. Water fist. Spinning punch Shibuki's father appeared behind them, punching Naruto's blade, trying to send it through Kabuto's neck. Boss defeated. The Edo leveled up, LV.3, unlocked spinning blade. Spinning blade, LV.1, spin while using the Edo to attack around you, shorter reach than normal. Water control heightened. Suiten. Large projectile leveled up, LV.3, Suiten. Great waterfall technique. Suiten. Great waterfall make an existing water source rise up and bring down the water. Received. Scroll. Chakra scalpel. Nice Naruto shouted happily, looking at the decapitated Kabuto. Sadly the body slowly turned into mud and Kabuto, holding his bleeding throat appeared a distance away, before running away. As if it would be that easy. Naruto said and fell to his knees, his arm full of cuts. Kabuto had that bad habit of cutting without you realizing it. Only the moment you couldn't move your arm was the moment you felt the pain. Quest completed. To Kigaku's trouble. Thank you, boy. Shibuki's father told him. Without you, I would probably be dead. Let me help you. One use medic jutsu later Naruto's HP was nearly full again. And thank you too, Fu. Don't thank me, I told you. Fu crossed her arm, I'm only here for him. Ah, thanks Naruto shouted, grabbing her shoulders and grinning widely. Without you I would be done for, that guy was a monster. Uh no, no problem. Fu scratched her cheek and looked away, not used to being thanked by people she didn't dislike. Naruto C and Yujito appeared beside him, the attacking force retreating after Kabuto's defeat. Are you alright? Kind of Naruto told them, you should have seen the other guy. Both sighed and turned to Shibuki's father. Shibari Dono, we are here from Kumo, we came for the treaty. I wasn't sure if I wanted to join up with you, but with our current state, I am afraid that Iwagakur could become forceful the now named Shibari told them, please rest, we can talk about the treaty tomorrow, I have to check up on my village. But you boy. He turned to Naruto and grabbed a scroll from his back, before unsealing a slightly blue blade in a blue scabbard. Received. Taki Katana. Thanks, old man Naruto's eyes lighted up and gently took it, strapping it to his hip. He bowed to him and turned to Fu. Can we talk in private? He was sure Yujito and C would tell Shibari, but he would have to warn Fu himself. Sure dot she grinned. So this Akatsuki would be full of people that could handle the guy we took out with one hand Fu asked him, her eyes wide. Yes Naruto nodded, I wanted to warn you, so you would know to avoid them or train as hard as you could to beat them one day. Ah I Fu looked away. Thank you, but I. Naruto wasn't the most observant person, but he knew how to judge people by the emotions they show. 
He heard that Yuzumaki Nido had the same ability, it was easy to make friends like that. Do you want to join me Naruto asked her. If we sell it to Shibari like that, his village would be in danger. He isn't a bad person Fu shouted before clapping her hands over her mouth. Shibuki I mean, he isn't bad, not like the others. I like my place, I just hate the people. But he. Naruto didn't interrupt her, not making the slightest bit of noise. His wife died to seven she confessed, and no matter how hard he tries, he can't hide the feelings he has when he sees me, the fact he is trying shows what good of a person he is. So, does that mean no? No, I want to go with you. Meet the other Jinchuriki. yujito sent seemed so nice and strong. I saw her easily go through most of the jonin. But you are amazing too. You have such a good relationship with your Bijuu that you can draw on its chakra without problems. It's nothing, she muttered. We just found some shared interests. Let let's start again. Hi, my name is Fu. She put forward her hand. Hi, Fu, I'm Yuzumaki Naruto. Naruto grabbed her hand, and they shook. Fu joined your party. What's a party? The party is a group of adventurers going through the world, sharing experience and fighting together to overcome obstacles. I guess you Kanoha pets aren't all that bad C told him the next day on their way to Shibuki's residence. I will ask the Yandame Rakage when we are home again. Ah and you people aren't all lunatics about to explode. Where does that rumor come from C asked him. Well, the only Rakage that was kinda cool was the first Naruto explained, all history books tell of your second Rakage, and the second Hokage failing with a treaty, the third Rakage was kind of a douch and the Yandame. The moment they returned to Kumo, they would probably see yet another moment of A jumping through the window. Yeah, I guess it's true, C sighed. Don't worry, Kanoha got their share of crazy people too. Naruto laughed. Mido guy and his student run around in a green spandex full bodysuit and bowl haircuts. C laughed with him. When they finally reached the residence, Fu and Shibuki were seated behind Shibari while he and Yujito sat behind C. We already told you about Akatsuki's threat. Not just for the Jinchuriki. Anyone could hire them with enough money. C began. We suggest a border free alliance. Right, what are your terms Shibari began writing on a scroll. We offer protection for high priority transports, minerals and jonin to train a few of your squads. C told him, picking up a scroll and giving it to Shibari. For exchange we ask for medicine, and your fertile lands make it easy for food to grow. Boring talk. Boring men. Naruto never listened well when it was about politics, but after a few minutes something else came up. We also offer the protection of your Jinchuriki, while Yujito and Killer B, the Rakage's brother, can train her. I refuse. This came from Fu, shocking Shibari with her polite tone, turning to him. Shibari Sama, I wish to join Naruto on his journey to warn the other Jinchuriki and train to protect myself. But Fu, we could protect you here too, Shibuki told her, his expression telling of hurt. You could, but that would mean danger for you. She told him, her eyes turning to Naruto. And I do not trust you. Even if you would throw yourself in front of me to protect me, there isn't a person I would do the same for in this village. Shibuki looked down, and Shibari had a look of melancholy on his face. We accept your terms Shibari told them, but Fu, you can go with him. If you can trust him, I can believe in his ability to trust him. Thank you, Shibari-sama. Don't thank me Shibari looked away, it's not you I did this for. This village made Naruto feel miserable. Are you coming with us Yujito asked him. No, I think I have another place to go. Naruto told her. Your crazy rakage is a man that would hold his word, I think, so I will come to visit you one day. Good luck then, boy. C told him. You too, C Naruto grinned at him, don't hold on to that hatred. Stupid know it all. Idiot. Idiot. Stop it, Yujito and Fu shouted, hitting C and Naruto respectively. Yeah, yeah. Su, where to now? Fu asked him across the border of the land of fire. Land of waves, Naruto said, quickly entering the menu and hitting the quest for it. Some criminal is holding it hostage. So we go in, kick some face, and become heroes, Fu asked excitedly. No, I think he has some strong missing men hired. That's too much, even for us. Oh, so what are we gonna do? Maybe they hired some ninja to help them, if we join them we can get some experience and learn how to deal with stronger enemies. Naruto explained. Hey, want to learn that nonsense's chakra scalpel technique? He dropped a scroll when we beat him. Are you sure, I didn't see any? I said he dropped it. Naruto told her, his hands going to his bag and pulling it out. Ahahaha <laughs> okay. She laughed nervously. Why don't you learn it? Never going to have enough control for it, but you seemed rather confident with your water sword. Thanks she smiled and grabbed the scroll. What are you going to do? Water walking. Naruto told her. What? You don't know that yet she laughed at him, her hands gripping the scroll tighter as she tried to hold it back. Yeah yeah, laugh it up, I didn't get much training in Kanoha, I left before I even got to join my sensei. Naruto sighed. 
Or well, he came a few hours late, I told him to screw himself and went to the old man. The hokage that is. Soo she grinned, I will help you if you want, if you call me Fu sensei. As if Naruto said before being poked on his neck, flinching at the tickle. Hey. Fu just struck out her tongue before running away from him. Wait Naruto ran after her. Two days later they were in the land of waves. Water walking helped them overcome the sea easily, it seems Tazuna still hasn't returned from Kanoha. Hell you someone shouted, followed by a crash. He saw a man with a knife stand over a child, kicking it. Think you can steal from me? Stop it a woman shouted back, throwing herself over the boy to protect him from harm. On three Naruto heard Fu say. He nodded. One. Two. Three they kicked the man at the same time, grabbing the woman and the boy, and jumping away before anyone realized what happened. Thank you the woman thanked them again and again, please, stay with us during your stay, are you the ninja Tazuna wanted to hire? No, we are, a, freelancers. Naruto explained to her. Thank you for having us. We heard you were having problems and maybe join the ninja that Tazuna wanted to bring. We don't have much money to pay you though the woman's gaze turned downwards. Naruto just shook his head and turned to Fu who played cat's cradle with a small boy. We aren't here for money, we just want to help. The reason they didn't move towards Iwa was because he couldn't predict how Anoki would react to him, nor how friendly the Jinchuriki would be. Meeting alive and meeting death can be quite different. Thank you she cried out again. This makes Taki look like a paradise Fu muttered when they went out to look for Gato's thugs. Taki isn't that bad Naruto told her, it's just that we aren't that popular, are we? Kanoha wasn't much different, but I had some people. So your dad was the one that sealed him into you, right? What's his name Fu asked him. Seven here is called Chimei, but it prefers to be called lucky number seven. Heh, mine here is Kurama Naruto pointed to his stomach, he's a bit grumpy, a bit sarcastic and mostly lazy, when not acting as if the world was the single worst place to be on earth. Screw you too, Naruto. Naruto grinned and made a fist, holding it up to Fu. Filler B showed this to me he explained, put your first to mine and concentrate on your seal. She did so and in a few seconds both of them stood in front of each other, right behind them the sealed Kurama and Chimei. Long time no see, Kurama. Chimei's voice sounded as if it was happy. How have you been, bug brain Kurama definitively was grinning. Quite good, fleabag. Fu watched Kurama with wide eyes as he and Chame insulted each other. Still thinking the tales make you stronger. Of course they do, more chakra, more power Kurama actually laughed loudly. Both Fu and Naruto sighed at them, but when both of them suddenly stopped they were thrown back into their real bodies. Something is happening, Naruto said, his eyes scanning around the perimeter. Right. If Tazuna left a few days ago the battle between Zabuza and Kakashi must be happening. Quick. Oh, got yourself some help, Saratobi sends Zabuza chuckled. Of course, sneaking up on someone like Zabuza, one of the seven swordsmen should be considered nearly impossible, besides the fact he has the ears of a bat. Saratobi san that wasn't Kakashi's last name the last time he checked. Of course, without him going on about how boring D-ranks were, they probably wouldn't have taken this mission with Kakashi. Nah, not important, phew. Asuma was in the same trap that Kakashi was in the last time, though he probably wouldn't have been for long, considering Ino was about to use her family technique on Zabuza. Naruto is that you Ino shouted wide-eyed, and with a life partner. Oh that's gold, Naruto leaves Kanoha to be with his one true. Ino Shikamaru shouted, his shadow extended towards Zabuza, he was stopping him from sending anything at them. Stop being so troublesome and hurry. She didn't need to because Fu blinded Zabuza with her cheap shot technique, but also broke Shikamaru's jutsu. Asuma could barely jump away before Naruto pushed his hands onto the water surface. Suiten. Great waterfall the whole water seemed to rise higher and higher before a wave hit the still blinded Zabuza, his control was too good though, and he barely moved from the water. But before Asuma could deal a finishing blow, Senbin hits Zabuza right on the neck. Haku. That is a regret he would never forget. The one who showed him that having precious people was more important than even his dream of becoming Hokage. Thank you, I've been after him for some time. Haku said, grabbing Zabuza and leaving before anyone could react. Asuma said, Dad told me, how were you, kiddo? Better than you it seems Naruto smiled and put Asuma's arm on his shoulder. You coming? Asuma's team stared at him, Shikamaru sitting on the floor, trying to regain his breath, while Ino was looking at Fu wide-eyed. Fu, can you help Shikamaru? Naruto asked her and she nodded, pulling up the shadow user by his collar and manhandling him. What the hell is going on Tazuna asked from behind Chaoji. Ah, so you two helped out in the village when I was gone Tazuna asked them as they sat around the table in his home. Thank you again for the save and taking care of the people. The old man bowed and Asuma chuckled at the embarrassed look that Naruto got. Shikamaru was resting in a bed on the upper floor while the rest of them sat downstairs. 
So, Naruto, is it true Ino asked him. What? You left Konoha because you wanted to be with Fu. Harry Ino was about to grab Fu's shoulder, but her chair coincidentally lost a foot at that moment, which made her fall to the floor. No Naruto shook his head, I left Konoha because I don't like the villagers. They don't like me either, because of the Kairubi. What does that have to do with anything Chaoji's ears twitched? I mean, I know your birthday is the 10th of October, but... My father was the Yande Mhokage Naruto explained, making Asuma cough loudly, and he sealed the Kairubi inside me to protect the village. That's classified information Asuma shouted. How do you know that? Hey, eh, the Yande Mhokage told me I looked similar to him and all that Naruto grinned, ignoring Ino's and Chaoji's wide-eyed stares. That would make it easy, Ino would tell anyone, and Asuma won't stop her because he told her so himself. So you are part of Kumo now. That won't make the old man happy Asuma sighed, scratching his head. No, I'm more of a freelancer. I'm trying to warn the other Jinchuriki of Akatsuki, a dangerous organization. Asuma nodded, having been briefed on them too. Who but Naruto or Ino cut in again, her hands on a notebook and pen. Back to beginning, son of the Yandane, Kaiubi sealed in, a passionate romance with a dark-skinned guy. Stop interpreting stuff in, Blondie this time it was Fu's turn to cut Ino off, grabbing the pen and snapping it. Me and bro here are friends, comrades. I hold Nanabi. Nanabi. A round of explanations about the Bijuu, Jinchuriki and Akatsuki followed. But that still doesn't explain how you two met. And where did you get this beautiful sword Ino grinned widely. She would tell everyone about a romance, no matter what they say. Geez, we met in Takigakur when I helped out a bit. Naruto explained. It was under attack by Kusagakur and Atagakur ninja. Atagakur Asuma said questioningly. It's a village in the land of rice fields, formerly, now the land of sound. Naruto said. All of them weren't that strong, but drugged with strange medicine and seals. I met a high-ranked one in Taki, he could use medicine with a precision that rivaled Tsunade. That should make it click for Asuma. Arachimaru was the only one even close to her level, and if someone that strong was in Odo, maybe he should warn his father. The sword was a present after my old one broke Naruto took it out and showed the slightly blue metal. No weapons on the dinner table to Zuna's daughter, Tsunami shouted at him. Sorry, sorry, Tsunami san. Naruto apologized and quickly hid the blade again. Zabuza isn't dead. Asuma nodded, but Ino and Chaoji weren't as calm about this. What do you mean, I thought that hunter killed him. No, he used Senbon, not a weapon to kill. Naruto explained, I think it was a comrade of his, trying to protect him if things got serious. By the grade of his wounds, he should be up in about a week. We will help protect you on the bridge for that time, Tazuna san. Once again, thank you. Tazuna bowed again, making Naruto uncomfortable. Few just narrowed her eyes at Ino, who slowly reached for another pen. That means we get to train for a week, Asuma said happily. He wasn't really one for much effort, his team was educated and trained by their clans, but this here, this was real and dangerous. He accepted his students' dedication and their will to go forward, and thus won't insult them by giving them a small chance for survival. Ino and Chaoji groaned, and he could have sworn even Shikamaru above was heard. I think I get what you meant Fu told Naruto, at least they don't wear green spandex. Now Asuma groaned and held his head. Don't talk about guy, doing that could summon him. Always going on about his rival. Should dot Naruto's head hit the table. Uzumaki Naruto Uomarin was back. Again. How did you find me Naruto asked him, his hand already going to the sword. I was in Kumo, in Taki and halfway across the continent last week, and you just came, randomly appearing. The challenger has appeared. Accept the duel. Yes or no? Naruto ran outside, seeing Marin in real samurai armor with a helmet and a sword nearly vibrating with power. I have trained on the mountains with the old monks Marin called out to him. I have gone through the winter of the land of snow, and I have heard the roar of lions hunting. Just to fight you on equal grounds. Screw you, not today, I got more important stuff to do. Duel refused. Wamarin didn't expect Naruto to just ignore him. What do you mean you refuse, I can't take no for an answer. Where did that lazy one of swordsman go? He felt your blade and killed himself in shame to give birth to a warrior. Naruto sighed, he created this monster. You know what, we have some problems around this village, I hope you realize that. Marin nodded, his eyes turning to the center of the village, even if not visible from here. Help us deal with this, and I will fight you when the bridge is completed. Thank you, Yuzumaki Naruto. Marin bowed. I accept your generous offer. Now what the hell were you talking about? I returned to my old dojo in the mountains of the Land of Stone, after my defeat in the Land of Lightning Marin gripped his chest dramatically, my grandfather taught me our family style, having seen my determination. You are a very strange person. Fu declared. Ah, what beauty Marin gripped his chest again. Please, oh maiden, go out with me. 
I don't like humans Fu declared, ignoring how weird it sounded, and weirdos like you are the worst. Conquest failed. You're supposed to be my game, not as romancing. Still, Naruto chuckled, sadly Marin took that as an insult. Oh, I see Maroon pointed his hand at Naruto. Your what her heart desires. Yes Eno shouted, scribbling more and more into her small book. Genius, perfect. A rival in love appeared for the dark skin to Kigakur beauty, but can he melt away the love she bears for the one she considers her closest kin already? Shut up both of you Fuu and Naruto jumped at Eno and Marin, the former managing to take the book and throwing it into some water, the latter though. Hmm, you dodge. Naruto grinned. Marin backstepped with quite some speed. When the bridge is finished, this will be fun. I, my rival. Marin declared. I will see you then, I need to find a place to stay. This wasn't how it was supposed to go, Naruto muttered, his hand shaking as both he and Haku had their respective weapons on each other's throats. Haku's intent to kill him woke him and Fu up, and he reacted before he realized. Ah, Haku nodded, I must have slipped. Fu actually laughed at that, and Naruto pulled his sword away. Haku did the same with the Senban. You know Gato will betray you, right? Naruto asked, knowing how futile it was to behave as if nothing happened. I want to suggest something, tells Abusa about it. Haku, knowing that Naruto and Fu would beat him easily together, just nodded. We are free ninjas, my mission is to protect the Jinchuriki from a strong force. Haku's eyes widened at the end, his eyes going to Fu. My next goal would be Konoha, where I could enter easily, but I wouldn't have the ability to access the people I need to. So Haku returned Naruto's stare with his own, you want us to do what? I want to see how far I've gone, but we will avoid killing each other. Naruto nodded to Fu, who picked up some scrolls and began to write down what he said. Gato will reveal himself soon enough, we steal his money after that, you get the majority. After Konoha, I wish to visit Kurigakur and help the rebellion. How could we trust you Haku asked in a shaky voice. You can't, but you know we can't beat Zabuza, and the other three wouldn't be able to best you Naruto confessed, but Asuma San is the Sandame Hokage's son, a strong ninja chosen to protect the daimyo once upon a time, and with our help they would win. They didn't know about Marin so even if they decided to betray them, they would have a strong swordsman to back them up against Haku. Haku swallowed hard and nodded again, accepting the scroll from Fu. We want Zabuza to pose as Jounin Sensei for a Kumagakur team Fu elaborated, the plan was sound. The Achibi Jinchuriki should be at these Chunin exams, considering Suna's degrading economical strength. Naruto here can ask the Reikage for his blessing. I think we broke him. Naruto commented on Haku's wide-eyed stare and rapidly paling skin. One does not simply claim to have a plan to infiltrate a great village easily. Considering Kano has lack security and the entering of Itachi, Kisame and Arachimaru on more than one occasion one could, but what Kanoha lacked in security it had in strength. If the Anbu actually fight they could be even scarier than Kakashi with his Sharingan. You're strange, you know. Fu told him, sitting next to him on the roof of their current residence. How so he asked, checking his sword for any signs of dulling. You didn't hesitate at all when you woke up Fu explained, as if you didn't really sleep, your first reflex was to grab a weapon. Yes Naruto nodded, things happen. People aren't kind. War isn't kind. If you could call it that. It was one big fight, a fight going on for hours. A fight that ended only when the whole resistance was gone. His thought stopped when he felt Fu lean closer, so that their shoulders were touching. You really shouldn't be so grumpy Fu sighed, even Seven thinks so, as crazy as it is, it's right. Sorry. Naruto apologized. With all the insanity always going on in his life, he could kind of forget the future that didn't happen. Don't apologize. I'm here to help you after all. Fu stood up and stretched, her eyes turning towards the direction where Asuma trained his team. He won't even let them rest when it gets dark. They have the whole day before the supposed attack to rest. Right, hopefully Zabuza decides to help us. Fu said. He will, if there is something he cares for, it is Kurigakur. Naruto told her. If you say so, though Fu began, her hand scratching her shoulder, where the seal was located, you still didn't tell me how you know who Suna Jinchuriki is. Information is power, with the right connections you can learn everything Naruto said, Sabaku no Gara is the Yandane Kazukija's son, and has control over sand. I didn't need to know more. But why are you so sure he would be in Kanoha during the Chunin exams? Suna is in shatters. Their ninja aren't as reliable, their Kazukija has a bad relationship with their daimyo, and worst of all Naruto turned his gaze westwards, where the land of winds would be located, far away, they live in a desert, a place that once held rich minerals which are long since gone, and without money from missions they can't sustain themselves. They are barely one of the great five anymore. Fu blinked. You know, you are a lot smarter than you look like. She giggled. What's that supposed to mean? Naruto asked, outraged, his finger pointing at Fu's face, nearly touching her nose. 
what I said she didn't stop laughing, and at his pouting face she turned around, trying to keep herself from becoming any louder. The bridge was eerily silent. The plan was simple. Asuma and his team would protect Azuna, while Marin could measure himself against Haku. The only reason Asuma agreed on it was because he promised to visit Kanoha after that, and that he could kill Zabuza the moment he tried anything. Even if Ino was sworn to secrecy after that, the Hokage would hear about it anyway. So. Naruto and Fu would be allowed to fight Zabuza. When the mist spread, it wasn't nearly as thick as the first time around. Zabuza and Haku appeared, and with a nod they knew that they had an understanding. Boss fight. Mamachi Zabuza, Swordsman of the Mist. Boss. Mamachi Zabuza. 5000 HP. 4000 C. We are gonna lose, aren't we Fu? asked Naruto, who just swallowed. This wasn't Kabuto, this was someone who nearly managed to kill the Mizukage. Who was stronger than both of them. Maybe Naruto managed weakly. It was probably his charisma thing that got Haku to agree to their demands, hopefully Zabuza wouldn't just suddenly decide that killing them had more advantages. The Edo Naruto saw Zabuza's eyes widen at the sword, he didn't see it the last time considering his state and the wave he used, but this was a special sword. Not as special as his though. The slash was stopped by the tip of Zabuza's weapon, the Demon of the Mist, reacting much faster than Kabuto ever could. Turning to his left, Zabuza hit Fu with the dull part of his sword. You're strong, Naruto grinned widely as Fu turned midair with the help of wings. The true warrior doesn't need words Zabuza said, and you are only important to me as long as you are useful. DCH old Zabuza was irritating, still believing that he didn't care about Haku in any way. I will break that illusion of yours. Suetan. Water Blade Fu attacked him, giving Naruto enough time to use his jutsu. Suetan. Large projectiles Abusa just blocked Naruto's attempt with the help of his sword and inhuman strength, while Fu's sword was stopped by Zabuza grabbing her hand. You two are good Zabuza told them, throwing Fu at Naruto and forcing him to catch her, stepping back a bit. But not nearly fast enough. Naruto and Fu looked at each other before nodding. Did you forget what we were Naruto and Fu asked at the same time? Who do you think we are? Their eyes changed at the same time, Fu growing two additional wings, while Naruto's hand went back to his sword. The Edo dropkick. This time Zabuza was actually sent flying by their combined force hitting his sword when he tried to block it. Ejin Churiki, even an unskilled one, was dangerous. Barely for a jonin, but enough to take a squad of Junin out one by one. Even so, his HP just reached 4900. Barely hurt. Looking at his own, Naruto was already down to 2000 because of these seemingly small hits. Luckily he had his regeneration. Suutan Kenjutsu. Crushing Blade Naruto already realized that chakra costly abilities would be enhanced using Kurama's chakra, clearly visible by their mostly red hue. Still, the red and sizzling hot water that went flying at Zabuza was unexpected. Zabuza growled, the mask of bandages boiled off his face, you monsters are just like that woman. Adin Mizukage, Turumi Mei Naruto told himself mentally, boil release. Not even close Kurama said, awake after so long, didn't I tell you to wake me when something interesting happens. Naruto blocked a strike, ignoring Kurama's biting. Fu sent bigger water bullets at Zabuza's back, hitting him and barely stopping him from using his sword as a hammer on him. Hoping for the best, Naruto stabbed forward, only to find his hand inside one of the holes. Shit Naruto's eyes widened as Zabuza grabbed his arm and twisted it around Arg. Broken, and probably out of joint too. It was horribly painful, even with Kurama's chakra healing the wound. You just boiled the water hot enough, anyone with fire and water chakra control can do that Kurama continued, ignoring Naruto's cries of pain, you need the bloodline for complex stuff, like actually melting someone's face off. Boil release isn't just hot water. This is as if you threw scalding water at someone. Thank you for the information. Naruto raged, his arm finally freed of the hole in the sword. Now heal this shit. The arm was halfway healed already, but his HP didn't go up. Skill unlocked. Futen Kenjutsu. Boiling slash, LV.1. Any more chakra, and you will just go berserk. I guess we can't risk that here. Boss fight lost. Before he could question why, he heard a slow clap from behind them. If a boss fight has a time limit, the one with more HP in the end wins. Both he and Fuu had around 1000 HP left, their wounds healing already, but the HP not really rising as fast. Exhaustion. Marin and Haku appeared behind them, the former was on his knees drawing circles on the floor. What did you do to him Naruto asked Haku, who just shrugged. I told him I was a boy. Ah dot Naruto nodded, as if that explained everything. Which it kind of did. Fu just snorted, turning to the clap with a heavy sigh. Demon of the Mist is more like a traitor to your donor, Gato was a small man, his hair to his chin and small sunglasses on his big nose. That's it, hurry dot Haku nodded, and with an ice mirror he appeared behind Gato but was blocked. 
No Naruto hissed, no, this isn't what was supposed to happen. Boss. Yanashi Jinpachi, Swordsman of the Mist. No Zabuza's voice was loud as an explosion rang, and with a blast Haku's arm was lost together with half of his upper body. Haku. Before anybody could stop him, Zabuza cut through all of Gato's thugs, any cracks his sword got from the fight against Naruto and Fu vanishing. Inpachi you nonsense. Naruto's nails cut into his hand due to his hard grip. Zabuza was a fool, only understanding the value of a comrade when his life is lost. And he couldn't take it anymore. Asuma grabbed Izuna while his team jumped down onto the water under the bridge. My rival Marin's voice didn't reach him, and Fu didn't have enough strength to force more chakra into her system. She still couldn't fully transform without opening the seal. No, this wasn't his fight. Zabuza would fight Jinpachi. He had another goal. Beta ran away, the moment Zabuza rushed at Jinpachi he didn't want to stand between them anymore. By when Naruto growled, a cloak of chakra around him turning into a dark shade of red. Kill you. Without hesitation Naruto cut through a few more thugs, jumping over Jinpachi's swing at him before kicking off from the Shibuki sword. Zabuza hit Jinpachi with a heavy punch. Zabuza started with Jutsu. But Naruto didn't see what would be done, his eyes fixed on Gato. Suiten. Large projectile a red hot stream of water flew outwards and hit Gato's back, the dwarf-like man hitting the floor and screaming out in pain. I'm sorry he squeaked out as Naruto came closer, the chakra cloak turning slightly black. It's as if your whole darkness began anew, Naruto. I can't accept it Naruto roared, if someone likes you he kicked Gato in the stomach, turning him around and making him hit the floor with his scalded back. Lives. And someone like him, who believed in precious things dies. He was about to pull out his sword again, striking down the criminal that took a life he tried to save, but someone stopped him. It was Fu, her unprotected hand getting burnt. Let go Naruto ordered. I won't dot she shook her head. He isn't worth this, killing someone so weak he is kissing your feet. An explosion rang, Zabuza looked slightly worse to wear, but his enemy wasn't much better. Both of them were geniuses in the silent killing techniques, even if they had missed, nobody would have an advantage. Haku deserved revenge. Not this kind, what Haku wants is that Zabuza can finally realize his goal. It wasn't like her at all, but she was right. If they had him alive they could get the money legally, by transactions and deeds. We can kill him afterwards she whispered to him. He nodded. This wasn't a victory he was proud of. Yen as Jinpachi and Zabuza were locked with their blades, Asuma used it to his advantage and cut Jinpachi's arms. Zabuza cut off his head afterwards. No, this wasn't a victory. Completed quest. Wave. Unlock bonus boss. Mamachi Zabuza, Swordsman of the Mist. Unlock bonus boss. Haku, Last of the Yuki Clan. Unlock bonus boss. Yanashi Jinpachi, Swordsman of the Mist. Reputation in the Land of Waves rose. The bonus boss can be fraud any time with the current party. Beating a bonus boss, who is generally stronger than a usual one, unlocks special abilities of theirs or equipment. This isn't a victory I wanted. The clouds answered with thunder. I will take this blade back home, boy. Zabuza said over Haku's grave. I am sorry, but I can't help you in Konoha. Asuma ignored the obvious, holding Ino and Choji by the shoulders. Shikamaru looked on the floor, and Marin on his knees held his hands together praying. Ah Naruto looked away, his hands shaking, of course, thank you Zabuza-san. I will join you as soon as I can. Zabuza nodded, sealing Jinpachi's sword in a scroll before turning around. This is what ninja life is about Zabuza said loudly, more for Ino and Chaoji than anyone else, we ninja, we are tools, we live and we die by that. But we are also people, I didn't realize that until it was too late. I will remember your name, Yuzumaki Naruto. He tried not to cry, but a sob still left his throat. Battles, they could be quick. Death even quicker. Sorry, Marin. Naruto sighed, rubbing his eyes. I'm not in a mood to fight, not today. Not for a while. Of course Marin nodded, his eyes still closed and his hands in a prayer, you were on your way to Konoha, right? Before Naruto could answer, Asuma told them they would go check on Tazuna and the bridge after the battle. Zabuza took Gato personally to the hideout and got anything he could take, most thugs left the country already. Yes Naruto answered. Please let me come with you Naruto looked at him, his eyes hurting from holding back the tears. Why? I wish to fight strong enemies, and when I come with you, I can challenge you whenever I want. Marin explained. Also, the Chunin exams are in a month or so, right? That means strong foreigners will come. I don't know Fu cut him off with her stare, her head nodding so slightly that anybody else would have missed it. Okay. Thank you Yuzumaki Naruto. Don't thank me Naruto's gaze went to Fu, I didn't do it for you. Fu smiled, slightly. Marin joined the party. The next few days, everything until the opening of the bridge was going on calmly in the land of waves. 
Inari and Tsunami stayed hidden in the home of the kind woman, but let them stay too when the battle on the bridge was going on. Tsuritobi Asuma Naruto began, getting out a scroll and throwing it to the man, this is a formal letter to the Sandame Hokage to let my team go to the Chunin exams. Sure thing Asuma smiled, that's easier than sneaking into a village with a missing min. Not one of my best ideas, but do you really think Izumo and Kitetsu could stop anyone from entering the village? Fair point Asuma laughed, pocketing the scroll and turning to his team. The bridge is completed, let's go to the opening, alright. Yes. Finally we can leave Ino's shout was stopped by Naruto's glare. Everyone had their own way to deal with things, but ignoring them was something he couldn't accept. Yes, we can dot Asuma nodded, his eyes more nostalgic than happy. To the heroes that saved our lives and our country, we shall name this bridge the Heroes Bridge Tazuna declared, making Chaoji and Ino jump in joy, while Shikamaru just looked at the floor, his eyes downcast. Yu looked worriedly at Naruto, his fists clenching again and his arms shaking. We are no heroes Fu heard him whisper, hero save, we just kill. That doesn't mean we can't be heroes Fu whispered back, it just means we have to try harder. You can't save everyone, Naruto. I owe them a try. You tried. And if Haku didn't get hit by Jinpachi, who could it have been? Yu Fu asked, her eyes narrowed. And don't you dare to say it would have been okay, because even you wouldn't have been able to heal from that. I'm sorry Fu dot Naruto said, the shaking in his arms stopping. Thank you. This time she didn't tell him not to thank her. We will see each other in Kanoha. Naruto told Asuma and his team. Where are you going now? Chaoji asked him. Train. Somewhere, anywhere. Naruto said. Asuma nodded and his team got ready to leave. Ino jumped forward and hugged Naruto, Fu and Marin, before turning around and running after her team. Don't forget to visit us then. Are all Kanoha shinobi so? This is the laid-back team Naruto explained, you should see the youthful one. This is by far the tamest case. It will be a lively trip Marin said. The samurai wanna became slightly more quiet since the battle on the bridge. Even though he was only three years older than both Naruto and Fu, he had seen much less of the world. At first Naruto thought he was just some random event character, and maybe he was, but it's the importance you give the people around you that's important. And Marin, he was his rival, a comrade now. Training was going on slowly, a few bandit camps there, another cat in the tree elsewhere. Being in a party meant everything went easier, somehow. But it also meant you didn't get as much experience. Learn skill. Suetin. Water blade, LV.1. At least there was that. Marin and he trained in sword fighting, because he had absolutely no talent in chakra control. Though even so he learned how to walk on trees one step at a the time. They bought some suetin scrolls they found in a few libraries. Learning advanced nature manipulation was much worse without shadow clones. You know, Marin began on the third day of training, we are awfully close to the land of rivers. Yeah, so? There is a village, Takumi I think, that is full of blacksmiths. He explained. We could buy some stuff there, maybe a replacement sword or two. You are a genius Naruto shouted, his eyes wide. Not really a sword, because this one still didn't dull a bit, but maybe a new armor. Or a weapon for me. Fu decided. Let's go. It took them one day to reach Takumi village, mostly because it was a bit hard finding it. I told you to ask for the way Fu told him, while Marin nodded. Are you crazy? Talking to strangers in the middle of the road Naruto said, what if they actually had something to do for us? Hey you, boy, you look like you got a strong pair of arms. Naruto jumped backwards and hit his face. Please no, please no, please no Fu kicked his legs from under him before turning to the man that spoke to them. Why'd you need Naruto's presence always brought in weirdos that somehow had some mission for them, which somehow gave lots of money and sometimes nice stuff. I need these weapons transported to my shop, if you help me each of you can choose one for free. Ah, if it's only that. Naruto was the first to grab a crate and lift it up easily, Marin and Fu followed suit. Quest accepted quest finished. Those tasks didn't even deserve quest names. The weapons they chose in the end were katana, an armored glove for Naruto and. Are those spiked boots Naruto and Marin asked at the same time. Kind of, I can use those with my kicks Fu shouted happily, her eyes glowing. Don't piss her off Marin whispered to Naruto later on. Don't worry, I won't. Later on they found a smith that would prepare some armor for them, and even would make a strong chakra enchanted sword, in exchange for every katana Marin carried with him. There were many. He gathered like six more before they finally got to the smith. Marin agreed fast. You boy the old smith pointed at Naruto, what is this sword? Ah, I got it from Takigakur's leader. Naruto smiled, bringing it out, the blue color shining brightly. This blade the old smith's eyes widened, it's old. I don't know if that man knew how much it was worth, but this is never dull. I kind of realized that after some time. Besides that it got no real special effects. Like exploding or repairing itself. 
True, how about I buy it from Y? Nope Naruto quickly hid the blade again. This is mine, get your own. Please boy, I will pay you with mountains of gold. Fewer reacted to that, hey Naruto. Mountains. Hear that. We could live without trouble for the rest of our lives. No. Received. Blue Moon Armor, Defense. Plus 15, this armor raises the effectiveness of water skills and sword techniques. Gone was his speed bonus with a sword, which probably meant he was slower than Marin now. And Marin. He got a new sword too and from what he saw it was fabulous. As in, the hilt was violet and pink, while the scabbard was in a similar shade with lots of brown. The blade itself was in a very dark grey color. Suiten Kenjutsu. Crushing blade the water around his sword didn't vanish after just one hit anymore, but the speed he lost was significant. So he began wearing weights. For the youth. Better not repeat that. The Edo Marin sword was enchanted with metals filled with so much wind chakra, it could cut through trees. The disadvantage was that it weighed double as much, because chakra doesn't just float around like air. So he began wearing weights too. The only one who didn't was Fu, because she depended on her wings to give her speed, and those she couldn't train because they were part of Jamei. Dropkick apparently the new boots demanded a scream at the top of her lungs to crush through walls. It isn't a drop if you don't go down from the air Naruto shouted at her. She just crashed through the trees around the land of fire as often as she liked. Two weeks until the Chunin exams. Crash. Another tree nearly fell onto him, but he cut through it. Two long weeks ahead. Though, while Naruto trained and pondered about his failures, Saratobi hears and plotted. Danzo was dangerous, he knew, but Danzo has long since forgotten that failure is human. Danzo has forgotten that being human is not a weakness, and being a tool will make you dull even faster. It took a lot of time, but he managed to insert a few spies into the route, and a few hired mercenaries were generally enough to stop the planned operations, the escalation generally bringing it to his attention. Danzo probably knew he had spies, but he couldn't confirm it considering Jiraiya's expertise with seals. The silencing seal on the route was sloppy, Jiraiya told him. When the route were disbanded officially, a few seeds of his remained. He couldn't get rid of all of them. The report he got from Asuma made him smile though, it seems Naruto found good friends and made it his quest to warn the other Jinchuriki. He just couldn't stop thinking about others. Formal, hmm Naruto was never formal, but the letter was written as polite as possible, and the names all in different styles, showing no signs of forgery. Uzumaki Naruto, Fuu and Kamigata Marin. The Kamigata clan of samurai lived in the land of Earth, far removed from the Wagakur, but still occasionally hired as mercenaries. What did Naruto have to do with someone like that? A retired ninja from Konoha, a stray Jinchuriki from Taki and a samurai from Earth. Here is inside, his head hitting the table, and he read further through the letter. I have information that one of the genin in the Chunin exams is a Jinchuriki Naruto wrote, and here is in quickly brought the list of registered genin out. If someone actually sent a Jinchuriki no, not or Iwa, those are jonin and have quite a control over their biju. Not Kiri either, with their civil war they couldn't afford for their Jinchuriki to leave. Suna. Of course, it was obvious. Enzo Sandame shouted and his Anbu appeared immediately, the Ichibi is coming to Konoha, you will be assigned to stay with him the whole time. Enzo just nodded. I don't know who it is, but maybe you can find out. Another nod. And someone get me Kakashi. Are you sure, Reikijsama Mabui asked her village leader. Of course, with the treaty signed we can show off a bit, our borders aren't as closed off anymore A said, his hands on the genin teams that could be sent to the Chunin exams, Kanoha is a sore subject for us, and what my father did was by no means something I can just ignore, but I believe in what the Nidame tried to achieve. The Nidame told in his journals of the first meeting of all five cage, how the Shadame Hokage was a man who was born into the wrong age, where only war and strife would exist. But he believed in peace, and that was what he tried to achieve before the Gold and Silver Brothers betrayed them. I believe in B's ability to train his gen in the rakage told her, Samui and Amoy will easily reach Shunin rank, Kerry might have something up her sleeve. Also. He held up a letter to her. Yuzumaki Naruto will be there. Yes, but more importantly, look further down. The Togaker she asked wide-eyed. The village that attacked them on their way to Taki. Yes, it's their fault we nearly failed the mission, and we need to learn more about them. Truly wise, rakage sama you idiots Abusa dodged a strike at his face and blocked a kick to his groin. I told you to come here. I couldn't, without the right funds we no matter what Zabuza did, Turumi Mei was a strong opponent, and even if he was confident in killing her if it depended on it, he wouldn't be able to stop her without hurting her. So the next best plan was necessary, blocking and dodging until she stopped. Sadly, she didn't seem to have plans to do that soon. And what do you do, you become some mercenary working for Scum May breathed out a boil release mist, which made him jump to the ceiling and dodge above it, and with that nonsense Jinpachi sword, getting into a fight with someone like him. 
didn't you promise to come back in one piece? He didn't know that Terumi Mei would be the next Mizukage when Yagura was dead, but he could very well guess. Sorry he shouted, actually making her stop. Bibi wahahaha she laughed. Mamachi's Zabuza, demon of the mist apologizing. Hell she wouldn't let him live that down, he apologized to Naruto for not being able to help him because it was courtesy, but right now this wasn't actual regret. Mamachi's Zabuza, demon of the mist apologized out of fear. Do you think I did the right thing Shibari asked his son. I'm not sure Shibuki muttered, I liked Furu, she was a one of a kind person. Yes, she is Shibari corrected him, but this place, it wasn't for her. We were horrible to her. Not me Shibuki looked away, never me. No, you were good to her his father nodded, which is why I am sure that you would be a better leader than me. Shibuki blushed, hiding his smile. But don't forget, if I don't accept you as Joan and you won't get this position before my death Shibari laughed, making Shibuki cough. Don't joke like this, father. Don't worry, by the time I die you will have married and have a child of your own Shibari said. Don't be too sure. Naruto didn't quite know what he expected on the morning they were going to leave for Konoha. He can say for sure it wasn't something like this. I have something for you a strange courier bird told him, holding out a scroll, your eyes only. The moment he took the scroll the bird vanished into the sky and left him confused. Watching the scroll warily he saw a big symbol on the front. Iron. Opening it he found it was a special letter. Greetings, Yuzumaki Naruto sent it began, my name is Mifune from the land of iron. After hearing about your exploits and getting information on your registration in the Chunin exams, I have decided to see for myself how skilled you are. Should you impress me, I shall take you on as an apprentice. Mifune the wait. Her quest unlocked. Perk Samurai from the land of iron all kinjutsu skills are stronger and faster, you may learn the iron samurai techniques. Condition. Impress Mifune. The perk quest is one of two ways to unlock a certain perk. The other way is fulfilling a certain condition. Naruto thought back to Tsunade's air perk in the long list of perks. Beat Tsunade in her prime ten times. For hell's sake no. Just no. But really. Mifune. The crazy samurai that beat Hanzo. Omarin shouted, pointing at Mifune's name. I know that guy, he and my grandfather spar ever so often. Right, you are a samurai of the land of earth, right Naruto asked him, getting a nod in return. There is an honored clan in every land, though the only great styles that still exist are the ones of earth, iron and water. The samurai in lightning joined Kumo, while sand and fire lost theirs in wars. You are like a fountain of knowledge Fuu nodded and pointed to the scroll too, maybe we should hurry and not come too late then, if you actually want to impress the general. Right, General Mifune dot. The S. Marin's voice cut him out of his thoughts again, rushing at the enemy and using Iedo at the same time as a dancing blade risk, two different techniques for the disadvantage both have. Stationary and imprecise respectively. The game made no difference between it though. Not too important, right? I've got something for you yet another strange bird appeared, your eyes only. This one had the fire symbol on it and was the formal acceptance to their registration. A tad bit late, considering they were halfway to Kanoha already, but better late than never. You didn't tell me the Hokage had a talking bird, Naruto.Fu commented, looking at the three documents they got. I didn't know, the old man never showed me. You still didn't explain to me how exactly you are so close to the Hokage Marin gripped his chest once again for the fifth time today. Truly, I was careless, my rival knows so many prominent figures, and who am I? The heir to a lowly clan nobody knows about. The fact that his clan was one of the three remaining great samurai clans was completely ignored. No matter his passion, he didn't seem to like his heritage so much. What do you mean, nobody few asked him. Only Naruto didn't know, and that's not really a surprise. Hell you Naruto said flatly and pocketed the scroll, we still got four days, so we don't really have to hurry. But Naruto Marin shouted. What about the enemies we might face? Should we not see who we are up against first? Should we not measure ourselves in a battle of will staring into their eyes and? Naruto and Fu were already gone, running through the forests of the land of fire. Wait for me. They didn't and Marin caught up to them after they already lit a fire and were preparing food. Anoha was exactly how he remembered it. Big giant gates, people walking in and out without any care in the world, the gatekeeper Katetsu all but napping. Attention Marin shouted, making Naruto and Fu cringe. Honored Kanoha Shinobi, you shouldn't sleep on duty. Even though Izuma was the more responsible of the two, his eyes were getting heavier every passing second. Or rather, they were before Katetsu jumped him on reflex and pulled out a kunai to protect himself and his partner. The lazier one had a better survival instinct. I am Kamigata Marin, and these are my comrades in arms Maroon pointed at Naruto and Fu, who were getting out their stamped documents. You are back Izumo and Katetsu shouted in tandem, and Izumo continued alone. I mean, I know you would be back, the Hokage said, but I didn't expect that. 
Ah uh, I mean, everything seems to be in order, the Jonin coming with you has to. We got no Jonin, do we have to go to the Hokage by ourselves Naruto asked, getting a nod. Izumo stamped the documents himself and put a small note under it, while giving it back to Naruto. The Wearful Sanbu. Naruto smiled and nodded, stopping himself from frowning. He wondered why no root operatives were sent after him, it seems that the sand aim had the village more or less under control. This village, Fu muttered, I don't like it. Not all people are bad Naruto told her, ignoring Marin's glares at each muttering person. Fu wasn't as active as him, she clenched her fist and looked at Naruto's back, they are people that lost their family and friends. I don't care about them, I want respect. That you have now Marin nodded, my respect, the respect of the people in the land of hot springs and the respect in. He stopped himself from mentioning Wave, but both Naruto and Fu knew what he was going to say. Naruto still didn't think he deserved their respect, nor did Marin forget Haku's gruesome end. Something bad is happening here Naruto said, getting questioning looks, if Suna really sent their Jinchuriki here, it can only mean they are planning anything. Should Konoha be attacked, help the civilians Marin. Fu and I, we will take care of the Jinchuriki. Marin nodded again, looking back to their path and seeing the big Hokage tower. Welcome to Kanahagakur, my name is Yumino Ruka, and I'm here to confirm your registrations, please tell me the ID number Naruto. Naruka didn't look up until halfway through his sentence, and stared wide-eyed at the slightly grown and definitively better clothed Yuzumaki Naruto. Yo, Haruka-sensei Naruto grinned. Don't yo. Me. I thought to you, his eyes flicked to Fu. Oh, so the rumors are true. Wait, what rumors Fu asked, her fists clenching again. Ino came back from a mission and told you about leaving Konoha to be with the love of your life, after Sakura rejected you so often. I will kill her Fu shouted. Though, Naruto didn't really understand why she got angry at rumors that were more about him than anything. I'm totally gonna kill her. Tell me she's in the exams. What Naruto didn't know was that Fu's reaction to embarrassment was more often anger than anything. She wouldn't admit to liking him like that. Nope. Obvious threats to the life of a Konoha Kanoichi aside Aruka said, it's good to see you Naruto. Naruto hugged his old teacher, smiling all the time. So, why are you here? Naruto and his party pulled their acceptances into the exams and showed them to him. Are you insane? Naruka asked. This is the Chunin exam, you aren't even ninja. Didn't the old man brief you? Naruto asked. Naruka shook his head. I am looking to warn the other Jinchuriki of a strong threat, I'm assuming Suna sent theirs here. Naruka's wide-eyed look made Naruto frown. If the Sandane didn't tell Aruka about this, most other Chunin don't know either. This could prove dangerous. Please accept our registration, Yumino Dono Marin bowed to Aruka, I can assure you that we three are strong enough to not die in these exams. Yuzumaki Naruto cannot die until I get into a duel with him. Don't claim as if you wouldn't stalk me after that again Naruto said. Fu was still fuming from before, and Marin just laughed sheepishly. Ah, if I don't register you the Hokage would probably skin me Aruka laughed, taking the three forms and putting his signature behind their ID number. My day here ends in half an hour, how about I treat you to some ramen? No Fu shouted, louder than Naruto's acceptance. You can't allow him to start again. Naruto was bad at managing the budget. And when confronted with ramen she didn't stop eating it. Fu barely got him from spending all their money they got after nearly a month of questing. Naruto tried hard not to cry. Now that Naruto had a bit of free time he went through the revelations of game aspects he had. Menu. Bonus bosses. The list wasn't filled with grayed out names like the perk list. Instead it had conditions. A long list of and conditions. Beat the Sanin for example. Hell no. Zabuza, Haku and Jinpachi were in green text. Hitting Zabuza's name brought him into an arena. A really big arena. But both Fu and Marin with him. Though both didn't seem particularly surprised. So the game did this. Bonus boss. Mamachi Zabuza, Demon of the Mist. Boss. Mamachi Zabuza. 10,000 HP. 4,000 C. L. Dot was Naruto's first and last word as a sword cleanly cut through his neck. But the Naruto jumped up, suddenly back on the menu. What was that? Losing against a bonus boss leads to no disadvantages. No, I mean what is a bonus boss? He didn't listen the last time considering his state of mind, but from what he saw it was an optional boss more powerful than the original. That meant he needed training. He was probably strong enough around the time he returned to Konoha after his training with Jureya. He dreaded to think if he could take Haku's bonus boss alone. Not to think about the fact he didn't wish to see Haku die again. Two times was hard enough. So Naruto just went to sleep. Tomorrow should be the day his team met Gara. I wonder who they found to replace me, Naruto muttered before dozing off. Those hotel beds were awfully comfortable. Naruto. Fu said, her eyes glaring out of the window. Yeah. What's going on Marin asked them, rubbing the sleep out of his eyes. 
The Ichibi dot Naruto and Fu answered him, opening the window and jumping out. The hey, wait for me Marin jumped after them. It wasn't hard finding the flare of Bijuu chakra when one was worn by his Bijuu, and the situation wasn't much different from before, only that this time it was Konohamaru and his two friends, neither Sakura nor Sasuke clothes. The Edo dot Naruto stated calmly, his sword coming to a stop exactly in front of Kankuro's neck. Drop him. Naruto Nai Konohamaru shouted after Kankuro dropped him fearfully. Idiot didn't observe his surroundings while he was angry at the kids. Yo, Konohamaru dot Naruto greeted him, not removing his sword. And hello to you, Sabaku no Gara. A third sibling appeared behind Kankuro in a swirl of sand, looking directly at Naruto. It hurt, seeing his close friend and comrade in arms reduced to this state again. But Naruto knew he could help him again, he just had to beat him. How do you know my name Gara? asked him, sparing a glance to Fuu who made a small hole in the floor with her drop in front of Tamari. I am Yuzumaki Naruto he introduced himself, Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi. Fuu the mint green haired girl said with a nod, Jinchuriki of the Nanabi. Tamari and Kankuro began to sweat, this was bad, really bad. Really, really bad. Both barely breathed anymore. As you know, Sabaku no Gara, I will kill you. You can try. Naruto finally removed his sword and let Kankuro go while Fu returned to his side. A few seconds after the sand siblings left Marin finally caught up to them, his sword still holding him back slightly. Hamon he shouted. How could you? You can't always do the awesome stuff without me. Naruto and Fu just grinned at him and left. Naruto Nai Yuzumaki Naruto Konohamaru and Marin sprinted after them. Mogi and Yudin just shrugged, not quite understanding what happened. So I told him, what, that's like double the price of the red one and he was like yes, but green is much stronger and I was like, what kind of idiot do you think I am Naruto told Konohamaru and his friends about one of their adventures. I can tell you, never go to Takumi, most of them are idiots. Konohamaru and his friends just laughed. Say, Konohamaru Naruto became a bit more serious, do you know who they got to replace me on Team 7? Ah uh, Konohamaru thought about it. I don't think they did, they didn't have any genin that would fit in, Haruka sensei said. I think Sasuke got apprenticed by Kakashi, and that pink-haired gorilla is getting training at the hospital. Pink-haired gorilla Fu laughed, the one that always hits you, right? That really fits. Truly, Kanoha is such an incredible village Marin nodded, Kanohamaru-kun, would you like to train with me? I have heard that you see yourself as a rival to Yuzumaki Naruto. You really should stop saying my whole name every time. Naruto said. Gulul Kanohamaru's eyes looked as if they were glowing when Marin gave him a wooden sword. Where do you keep that stuff he didn't even have any ceiling scrolls. Marin just smirked. Don't go too hard on him, he barely knows hench. Can I call you Ani San Konohamaru asked, Marin flinched back. I would rather not Marin didn't look particularly happy about the title, and Konohamaru at least could read the mood well enough to not go on further. Or maybe it was Mogi stomping on his foot. So, now that Marin is gone playing samurai with the Hokage's grandson Narito side, what are we going to do? I've heard they had this awesome sweet shop down the street Fu turned to him, clearly excited. I want to go there, please. Please. Sure, sure. Dot, at least Fu knew how to hold back. He didn't like to admit it, but he had no power over himself when attacking Raymond. You would have gone without me and didn't bring anything back at all if I said no anyway. Sure thing she smiled, turning to the door. Is it the insect in you that loves sweets Naruto muttered, his eyes going to the amount of money she unsealed and put into her purse. He sneakily took the purse before they went out. Nope, that's all me, Seven just loves them too few stuck out her tongue. Nearly every country had their own hotel within the village to avoid fighting, Naruto and his team were with the other minor teams. That meant Kusa, Taki and Aim. Which means Konoha probably didn't know about Kusa's attack on Taki. Naruto actually heard rumors that Kumo sent teams to the exams too, which wasn't what happened the last time. Naruto a familiar voice brought him out of his musings. Ibuki Naruto bit his tongue and was about to get hit by his gift to them, the Ladle of Doom. Luckily, Fu blocked the strike. It's Kari, you idiot the dark-skinned Ritid shouted. Karu I. What's so hard? Sorry, I bit my tongue. Like I'm gonna believe that. Naruto Fu's voice broke off their fight, who is that? Ah, right, that's Kari from Kuma Wait, they were in the sweet shop already. Weren't they in the hotel just now? How does time fly like that? She's a friend. Actually, Fu wasn't even listening anymore, after hearing Kumo she just let go, knowing Naruto wouldn't get attacked again and ran around like a kid in paradise. Naruto, give me my money she returned a few seconds later with her arms full of bags. That's Taki Jinchuriki right Kari asked him, to which he nodded. Pointing at a few of the bags he told her to put them back. The Taki Jenin mostly steered out their way, and the Jonin didn't dare to do anything with two Jinchuriki in their hotel. Not part of Taki anymore, but yeah, she's my close friend. 
H-O-O-O close friend, who before Naruto could ask her what she meant, a bag hit her head. Oi, what's the matter bitch? Your face was just really annoying just now Fu shouted back. Oh you want to go there, hmm? What about that salad you called hair? What, did the hair gray out a bit already, I won't eat sweets for a year if that's natural. L. Naruto said and heard someone besides him say the same. Yo, Amoy. What did you do? It's a catfight Amoy whispered nervously, looking for a place to hide. You can't bring your life partner to. Whatever he said was cut off by both Carrie and Fu punching him. I let you alone for 20 minutes, Samui and C came up to them. So you were sent here Naruto asked. I will be happy to kick your face. You can try, Blondie. Samui smirked. Look who's talking. Who the hell is responsible for this fiasco the store owner appeared after Carrie and Fu began throwing sweets at each other. It's your fault isn't it, I will skin you alive. Luckily, a bit of money could take care of that. Sadly, Fu and Carrie were now going to spar searching for a free training ground. Which left Naruto, C and Samui alone in the middle of the village. She isn't usually so C began with Naruto nodding. Something is setting her off the last few days Naruto sighed, no idea what, but she gets really angry suddenly. Samui just shook her head at the two. So you are here for the exams too? You don't really have a rank to get that C said. Yeah, we are here because Suna sent their Jinchuriki here Naruto told him, making C twitch. Furthermore, maybe we can get some clients for our freelancing business. Didn't you call those Dunno events C asked. No, no Naruto laughed it off, in Kanoha there were nearly no events. Maybe because the people just didn't like him. I meant actual missions people sent to us, we are only two, and Marin is here to challenge a few people. Our actual mission is to warn the Jinchuriki after all. Where are you going after this C asked. Depends, either the land of iron or the land of water. Naruto said. Why there? General Mifun sent me a letter, should I impress him here he will take me as an apprentice Naruto explained, making Samui react this time. General Mifun, leader of the Iron Samurai Samui shouted. Not cool, no this was exciting. Samui was well versed in many legends and knowledge about nearly every fact in recorded history. The Mifun that once survived a battle with Hanzo, alone with only his sword. Needless to say, any swordsman or swordswoman worth their blade would be honored to meet that person. Are you saying he will be here Samui shook him by his shoulders. I've never seen Samui so C began, not finding the right words for it. I am so sorry. Please, let me Naruto's head snapped forwards and back before she finally let go. Ah, that Samui didn't quite look embarrassed, but that's as close as she could get, not cool. It was late at night, the night before the beginning of the Chunin exams. Apparently, Danzo wouldn't just let it rest. Fu daughter name was enough, and with a kick she destroyed the window, making shards hit the enemy ninja. Six of them, Marin. The Edo dot both of them said calmly, cutting into the mask's eyes before Fu prepared her wings and flew upwards. At seven she shouted, and both of them understood. Naruto jumped up to the ceiling and ran his sword through the floor, while Marin blocked incoming kunai from the window. Hiding in scales. With a verbal warning, all but the two now blind ninja were gripping their eyes in pain, and Naruto withdrew his sword, smiling as he saw the blood three down. Suiten. Large projectile lay stream of water sent one of the ninjas flying, giving Fu the possibility to kick him down. 4. Duden Kenjutsu Marin's voice cut through the night, his sword showing off the wind chakra that was forged into it. My grandfather would kill me for perverting this technique, Earth Sickle. Instead of cutting through the floor and creating a wave, the very air transformed into a blade and cut down one of the masked men. 5. Marin's sword wasn't useless with his usual techniques, but the blade made wind techniques much easier. Events to get nice loot were a nice thing. The last two are mine Fu shouted, dropping down and breaking the arm of the root ninja that tried to block her. The last one managed to get away. And before they could even react to anything else, the bodies of the beaten ninja rapidly grew hotter and began to burn. Ah. Suetin. Suetin Naruto tried to get rid of the flames, but it was impossible. For his sloppy sealing arts, Danzo knew how to make destructive ones. How are we gonna explain that to the Anbu Fu asked, rubbing her boots over the floor to get rid of the skin that stuck. The truth. I believe you. The Sandame Hokage said smiling, to the shock of Fu and Marin. And you even kept your promise of visiting. It's nice seeing you have friends to watch your back. Thanks, old man. Naruto smiled. I'm glad to have found them as well. Hey, old man. Yes. Sabaku no Gara, he's the Sunage and Churiki Naruto said, Fu and Marin shuffling their feet uncomfortably. I know. Hiruzen said. He was the only choice after eliminating the rest, his bloodlust is obvious from the moment he stepped into the village. What are you going to do? 
I doubt Suna would attack us alone, if they did. We have no proof right now the old man explained, but just to be sure, I sent for Jiraiya and another Anbu who can help with the Biju. Ah he probably meant Yamato, we will help with Gara, old man. Don't worry. But he's unstable and ready to explode at any time, I can't let. Really, don't worry. Few here has complete control over the Nanabi's chakra. Naruto patted her on the shoulder. We want to ask you something else, if it was possible for Jiraiya to prepare a key to open her seal. Why would you do such a thing here is an asked, wide-eyed. The Nanabi, or lucky number seven as it wants to be called, is really good friends with Few. Naruto smiled. I met it, it's really playful. And if she finally opened the seal, she could switch into the full Biju form. Only you, Naruto Hirazin chuckled while Fu and Marin let out a sigh of relief. I will trust you with this then. I won't let harm come to the village that my father tried to protect Naruto said, to which Hirazin smiled sadly. Now the only thing that remained was warning him of the Edo Tensei. Or maybe try to stop it before it happens. One last thing, when we were in Taki, Kusagakur attacked. Naruto told him, which made Hirazin curious. They got help from a Togakur, filled to the brim with drugs that enchanted them. Asuma should have told you about that. I caught a glimpse of silver hair when we fought, I don't think Kodo's presence here is random. He needed to bait Kabuto into showing himself, he couldn't just accuse him, that would make him look like a fool and probably be arrested. But silver hair wasn't really that spread, and exceptionally skilled with medicine just reduced the list further. Thank you for the warning, Naruto. No problem, old man. Naruto smiled. I will have Jiraiya look at the seal when the Chunin exams are over, we have a special location in case the Biju goes berserk anyway here is an explained, making Fu and Naruto smile. Now why don't I invite you to some ram? No Fu grabbed Naruto and ran out, leaving Marin behind again. Wait Marin shouted and ran after them, making the Sandane chuckle again. He found good friends, it seems. Even that Kamigata boy wasn't as he expected. Hey Fu, how was the spar with Kari anyway Naruto asked her on their way to the first exam. We found something we agreed on and parted ways as friends. She said, not explaining further. Actually, they beat the shit out of each other with nothing but tojutsu until both got into a talk and found some things they shared. Like their love for their respective weapons, the ladle and the spiked boots. Both are not really weapons, but the first was gifted by Naruto, even if it was something he gave B, and the latter was paid by his money before she got into the questing. I wish you two would stop doing this to me all the time, Marin muttered, I'm sorry I'm the slowest outside of the battle. Please my comrades, don't leave me behind anymore. Ahaha dot Naruto laughed flatly. You will learn how to deal with your weight soon enough. The sword is an increased bonus. The sword double as big as this would weigh half as much Marin shouted. Sorry, who was the one that chose this sword instead of going all crazy into six sword style Naruto laughed at him. Naruto. So Naruto looked over at Jenin standing in front of the wrong door. Lee and his team, check. Izumo and Kitetsu is wrong Jenin, check. Sasuke and no wait, no Sasuke. Right. The Kanoha Chunin exams were a team exam, without at least three you couldn't compete. Other countries probably had other ways. Instead, one of the Taki teams was having a shouting match with Akusa team. Wait, is that Karen? Oh I Naruto shouted with a large grin. Yuzumaki Naruto at your service his grin grew even larger at Karen's widening eyes. Stop fighting you idiots and use your eyes. Why did you do that Fu asked him after they left for the real exam door. I want more competition Naruto admitted, but the real reason was that red-headed girl. Perrin was in Yuzumaki, Sasuke knew that in the future, and Kabuto admitted it himself once. She's in Yuzumaki Naruto said before Fu could grow angry, family is family. Even if they are in an enemy village. Fu just nodded, she wasn't an enemy of Kusa, Taki was. She was an ally of Naruto, that was enough. Hurrying to the door was enough to skip Lee possibly coming after them. What he didn't expect were Asuma's and Kurinai's team standing there, considering some of the changes. Naruto Ino shouted happily and hugged him. And Fu. Before she could hug the mint-haired girl she was hit in the stomach. Stop spreading rumors about me, crazy girl Fu shouted at her. Strangely, Ino just seemed to shrug it off. Marin she went to hug the swordsman, which he returned awkwardly and whispered something in his ear. He just shook his head. No, I won't go between those, I feel that their bond is stronger than what I could achieve Marin declared loudly, making Fu grind her teeth. Troublesome, insane Shikamaru looked like he was ready to hit his head against the wall. Boy, Naruto Kiba shouted. Is it true, you betrayed the village to be with the love of Yo? Shino quickly grabbed Kiba by his collar and pulled him back. Don't do that Shino whispered, why you ask? Just look at Hinata. Hinata was gripping her arms rather strongly, her eyes downwards. Hello, Hinata, right Naruto asked kindly, ignoring Fu's rapidly degrading mood and Ino's smile in her direction. Hinata answered with a few syllables and just fainted. 
Ah. Why did this happen here even few had to laugh. It wasn't like Naruto did that on purpose, but that's just his bad luck. Naruto Uamoy appeared, throwing his arm around Naruto. Are you trying to start a ninja world war? You can't just go seducing women from Kumo, Taki and Konoha. What if? Don't. Even. Start Karui kicked her teammate in the back, sending both him and Naruto to the floor. Hey, you really shouldn't before Naruto could even think about his actions, his sword was on Kabuto's throat already, making the spy jump back. Hey. Ah Naruto looked embarrassed, less at his action, more for his lack of thought on the part of it. Kabuto wasn't outed yet, I'm sorry, I don't like it when people sneak up to me. Kabuto just swallowed, that strike could have been his end. Either of his life, or he would have to reveal his skills and be outed as spy. No problem, that's a bad habit of mine. Kabuto laughed. Let me introduce myself, I'm Yakushi Kabuto. I wanted to warn you. The Genin turned to where his finger pointed, looking at the other teams that glared at them. Though mostly at Naruto. They heard of your exploits, Naruto san. Kabuto mentioned. I have these nice cards here, you see. Kabuto's explanation didn't change from the last time, only that Kumo sent two teams this year, and nobody asked about Gar or Lee. Yuzumaki Naruto, then Kiba grinned at him, making him grab his sword. If he could just cut through the cards. Yuzumaki Naruto, the Ronin weight, that's new. He got the title as Masterless Ninja and Samurai doing odd jobs to help people. Samurai Naruto asked, sure he had some armor and a sword, but he didn't have any formal training. Because there is no information at the jobs he did, nobody can say what rank they were Kabuto continued, he's proficient in sword fighting, suetan ninjutsu, and knows a bit of suetan kenjutsu. You know a bit much Naruto commented, making Kabuto's eyes turn to him, but that's alright, nothing on these cards could help you beat me or few if we work together. Right Kabuto smiled though, he is also the son of Namaka's Minato, the Yandame Hokage. But before anyone could ask though, it happened. The Odo Genin, one or two were the sacrifices for the Edo Tensei, smuggling in another to use the technique will be harder for him. Especially with the old man knowing about Orochimaru. The moment Dosu appeared and threw a punch at Kabuto, which he dodged, Naruto had his sword halfway through Dog's throat. The Edo dot usually a technique to strike at soft spots on the body with speed, when used with the speed of his enemy though. Dog's head flew off, making everyone in the room flinch back. Luckily Hinata was still out. Ah sorry Naruto sounded cold, few were ready to kill the remaining two Odo Genin just stood at his side, well Marin had his hand on the sword already, I hate it when people sneak up to me. That removed any need of Odo being in this village. Listen up Ibiki appeared with his group of Chunin. I a what happened here? The Atagakur Genin attacked the Kanoha one a random person in the room explained. Nobody would stick to enemies, especially when they wanted to fight Naruto, the Ronin over there just protected him. Kabuto swallowed again, this blade was more dangerous than the normal katana from before. This would have taken his head cleanly off without any chance of rapid regeneration. I will review the video evidence after this to see if I will allow you to continue Ibiki said to Naruto, for now, Atagakur will leave this room. But he murdered our teammate. Like I care. I want to challenge him, to avenge my fallen cum. But I refuse. Naruto crossed his arms. I hold no love for Atagakur, but I would not have killed him if he hadn't attacked first. Gin and Zaku flinched under his gaze. Even they weren't foolish enough to attack now that a Jonin was present. This won't end here Zaku declared before leaving with Kin. No Naruto shook his head watching them, it already has. Listen up maggots, my name is Marino Ibiki the scarred man declared. And this might just become the worst day of your life. Now, Naruto wasn't really concerned considering he knew he didn't have to do anything. He was still less than amused. Question 1. Intelligence check. Failed. The game didn't even say there was a skill or stat for that. Intelligence check. Failed. Just looking at the questions made him feel dumb. He knew the majority of the room had no idea and was supposed to cheat, but really. Why should he bother? Intelligence check. Failed. Instead, he took the time he had to think. Dosu is dead, which makes the Odo Jenna no threat, because they have to leave the village soon. The next best choice to use the Edo Tensei, would be one of Kabuto's teammates, Orochimaru doesn't want an international conflict. And because he knows that his attack will be known by every nation, he doesn't wish to use foreign genin. Kusa was pretty much under his thumb though, it seems. Kabuto wasn't going to come close to him any more than necessary, afraid of the hostility he showed. He does it to protect his precious people, even if nobody really knows they are. The whole shinobi nations are worth protecting. Right, Haku? Naruto muttered, closing his eyes. But to protect, he needed to train more. The skills he had could be trained, but he needed a teacher or expensive scrolls for new ones. The game didn't allow him to learn something by himself, out of the principle that he could remake a technique like the Rasengan. He really hated it, but that's the price he paid. 
Maybe if he asked Jiraiya to learn his father's techniques. Would he get the toad contract again? Without Sinjutsu, Madara and Abita were nigh impossible to beat. Skill unlocked. Sinjutsu, LV.0. Wait, what Naruto's eyes widened, but under Ibiki's gaze he sat down again. Why did the game just do that? Didn't he need a contract with some animal clan and? His body wasn't even ready for it probably, but all Sinjutsu was, was sitting calmly and gathering nature chakra. The Shadame Hokage could use it without a contract too. Skill unlocked. Observation, LV.1. Menu. Skills. Observation a skill allowing for analyzing other characters and happenings more. Things you do not understand seem like a puzzle, with enough pieces you can think of what the picture could be. Neat. Sitting in the room again, Naruto looked at Ibiki. Observation. Marino Ibiki, Jonan. 4000 HP. 2000 C. Perks. Mind of iron a person with this perk is impossible to break through torture or interrogation. Even the Yamanaka might be hard pressed to extract something from his mind. The rest was rather muddled. Either because of his skill level, or because of Ibiki's perk. He couldn't even see a skill list. Turning to Marin, whom he saw scratching his head about most kunai questions because he never used one, he repeated the process. Hamagata Marin. 2200, HP. 750 C. Perks. Passionate samurai a person with this perk walks the Bushido with every fiber in his being. A bonus to every kenjutsu skill is added. Passionate rival a person with this perk has found his counter in another and tries to surpass him. Nothing can ever change this. Every time he or she is beaten, they will train and become stronger. He silently wondered if Kakashi had a dispassionate rival to Gai. Heir to the Kamigata clan. Um. No matter what he did, the perk didn't show its benefits. Doesn't matter. Fuel. 4000 HP. 3000 C. Perks. Jinchuriki of 7 a person with this perk bears or does bear the burden of carrying Chame, the Nanabi. Maximal chakra is increased, using its chakra the regeneration is higher. The Santhropist a person with this perk dislikes humanity as a whole. While there can be exceptions for certain persons, trusting any other human is hard. Tomboy a woman with this perk doesn't really behave like the stereotypical woman and would rather do things boys do. Why the hell is this a perk? Naruto's head hit the desk. At least he knew that he couldn't really read the skills out of someone. At least not with his skill level. Ikushi Kabuto. 6000 HP. 3000 C. Perks. Healing body a person with this perk heals improbably fast from any wound. A Jinchuriki using Biju Chakra gains this perk temporarily. Godlike spy a person with this perk has been a spy for a long time, taking on many names, many masks. Stealth skills are increased in effectiveness by 3. Broken past a person with this perk has met much misery and is easily manipulated. Loyalty to whomever takes care of him is nigh unbreakable. Observation, LV.1, is only able to show you 3 perks of any person. Thank you for telling me now. At last the first part was ending, and Ibiki held his speech about the tenth question. Ino had to physically restrain Shikamaru from lifting his hand. Should he or should he not? Why not? Listen up Naruto shouted, standing up. Whoever gives up now, will never be able to beat anyone. How will you improve? You can talk, you don't have a rank one of the genin shouted, making a few people laugh. I don't, but why should that bother you? Do you think that just because you are a Chunin you get a super boost that makes you impossibly strong? I have beaten many Chunin already. Let it go, Naruto Fu beside him flared Jame's chakra, they aren't worth it. That Odo Genin wasn't even half as good as most of their force in Taki. And without us, they would have lost completely. That provoked the Taki Nin. And those Kusa attackers. Even more pathetic. Do down. We will fight both the Taki and Kusa Genin teams shouted and hit the table. That's enough Ibiki shouted back. Anyone here who wants to leave now? Everyone stayed. Very well Ibiki narrowed his eyes at Naruto and Fu, while Marin still looked like an empty husk in front of his test, all of you passed. Do or don't. Ibiki's speech motivated the teams further. Now, because of a certain someone the second part will. Anko appeared just like last time, through the window with a banner. Lice she was interrupted by Ibiki. The second part is delayed until tomorrow, Anko Ibiki said, furthermore, you are too early anyway. What, why Anko shouted. Ibiki pointed at the blood on the floor and then at Naruto. Ah, sorry Naruto apologized. He wasn't sorry about Daisy's demise at all, still something seemed to be amiss. Why would they delay it for a whole day when one team was disqualified through the death of one teammate? Don't worry about it, you will be under review though Ibiki told him, if this wasn't defense, you will get thrown out and banned from all villages in the Chunin exam treaty. Naruto laughed nervously after Fu glared at him. Truly, my rival, I had not expected such brutality from you. 
Shut up, Marin, you've heard how dangerous Odo actually is. Naruto muttered. If he actually had some skill, he would have dodged like Kabuto, or maybe blocked it. He either held back, or depended too much on those body modifications. Bright Few looked at the remaining blood on the floor, I hold no love for any Odo Nin, but still this was rather excessive. I don't like people sneaking up Naruto shouted, his fists clenching. When he had full control of Kurama's chakra, he could feel the intent of everything. Now that it was missing it's as if a third eye was closed. Everything made him more paranoid. Ah Few nodded, looking away. She would understand when you couldn't trust anyone around you. While Naruto generally was a very trusting person, the possibility of spies was always prevalent, and now that he couldn't feel it, he had more problems differing between allies and enemies. Don't worry, Few. Naruto told her, ignoring how Marin and Ino began to whisper in the corner. Few didn't. What are you talking about? Naruto's crazy Kenjutsu Ino answered with a smile that said definitively not that. Marin just nodded as she turned back to him and whispered. The working title is The Ronin, about a samurai on a lonely road, betrayed by his closest comrades, and saving a village from ruin, being allowed to marry the village leader's daughter. And yet, in this improbable relationship love blooms. Pure genius, Ino-sensei Marin whispered back heatedly. Consider me your first fan, I will send you letters from our adventures. Yes Ino shouted, pumping her fist. Quest, updated. Chunin exams. Second phase. So it seems a few differences existed. Like the fact that a few teams didn't come after that hour, like Karen's team. Or even Lee. Late. I'm late. Late the green devil appeared out of nowhere with his two teammates under his arms. Hello. Naruto greeted Lee. Yash Lee saluted Naruto, dropping his teammates. Yuzumaki Naruto, fight me. No more fighting, boys. Midarashi Anko appeared between them. I was called by the Hokage, but I see that Ibiki pointed you in the right direction. This my friends is the forest of death. Pointing at the forest behind the fences, she put on a bright smile. This will be your home for the next five days she declared, making many people, mainly the rookies groan. The forest was just as he remembered it, as dark and dangerous. I will not fail Marin shouted, come at me, oh enemies of mine. The SHH few grabbed him and forced him to be quiet. Are you crazy? The strongest will be at the tower in the end. If you call everyone here we will have to fight more than anyone. Naruto, say something. Earth scroll. Yuzumaki Naruto has an earth scroll Naruto stood on a tree. Naruto. Now anyone who wants the scroll will come, and anyone else will probably try to reach the tower. Naruto said, making her sigh. The moment we get a heaven scroll we go to the tower. Hum out Naruto pointed his sword at one of the trees. Your team wasn't there, where are they? Interrogation it was Karen, I went to the Hokage, you, you are really in Yuzumaki, right? Yes. Naruto nodded, while Fu and Marin were ready to pull out their weapons. Help me she bowed deeply. How the three answered her with questioning looks. I told the Hokage about Orochimaru, a Togaker she explained, Kanoha will be under attack, and Orochimaru probably already knows about my betrayal, and I don't think Kanoha can protect me. Why are you in the forest here though Naruto shook his head. He will go after the Ichiha in these five days, but nobody has seen him since he went to a training trip with Hada Kakashi Karen said, he will be back to the finals though, I wish to ask for your protection. Why should I think? I don't know you. Naruto would help her of course, but he couldn't trust her word and would have to ask the Hokage himself. We are family, you and I Karen said. Smart of course, playing that card, Naruto would protect her even if she didn't ask, I'm Yuzumaki Karen, and right now he has his best assassin after my head. Kabuto. And there is one place he wouldn't expect her, right in the forest. He probably would look into the Anbu orders to protect her. Which don't exist. He somehow had the feeling that the old man arranged this himself, somehow. Quest. Protect Yuzumaki Karen. It's not like I can say no to someone like you Naruto side, stay with us, we will just say we are bringing you through the forest. Also, let's cheat a bit. You are a censor, right? She nodded, her eyes wide. How could he know? You found us too easily, too fast, even after my shouty answered the silent question, tell me, how many teams are moving towards us right now? Two, no, three. I think the one with the bad feeling to his chakra is at the tower already Karen told him. That meant Gara wasn't a threat right now. Good, Ada. Now Dot Fu said, blocking a kunai aimed at Karen. I will take care of them, Marin, stay with her. Why do I always have to do this he complained, but still moved in front of her, while Naruto rushed up another tree and catapulted himself at one of the genin. The Megakur, ha these were Hanzo's loyal soldiers, those that remained. The moment he crossed his enemy's path, the aimed genin's arm was cut open. Meanwhile Fu was having the time of her life with the other two. Yaya Fu flew as high as she could, holding the two genin by the necks. You don't want to stab me, even with chakra you wouldn't survive this drop. 
A few minutes later they had the other team close to them. The problem was, it was Kiba's team. The third team saw a few from afar and went another way. I won't hold back, Mutt. Naruto grabbed the hilt of his sword. Like you are strong enough to beat me Kiba scoffed, you weren't even good enough to become a Konoha shinobi. Like I care Naruto pulled his sword and blocked Kiba's punch. You don't punch swords, moron. The cut wasn't very deep, but still made him flinch back. Marin was running from Shino's insects, the only one with a disadvantage against the bug user, while Hinata looked quite unwilling to fight Fu. You like Naruto, don't you Fu? asked the Hayuga, receiving a choke sob as answer. Hinata wasn't a very confident person. Scratch that, she had the confidence of a squirrel. I, I always admired him Hinata admitted, when I heard he left I, I. Tell him Fu said, making Hinata actually look up at her, he's that kind of idiot, he wouldn't know if you don't tell him. But let me tell you this, admire him from afar as much as you want, but don't dare to think highly of yourself when you never helped him in his time of need. Only Kumo treated their Jinchuriki nicely. Because they were heroes, and because a happy ninja is a loyal ninja. Fu shook her head. I won't let you stand by his side if you can't defeat me Fu declared. She could have sworn Kiba giggled while Akamaru rushed at Naruto. You have lost. Naruto had his sword on Hinata's neck, having created a clone to sneak up on her. The weakest link, I'm sorry Hinata. He actually was, but now that he knew Gara was at the tower, he had to hurry and bring Karen there too, ask the Hokage if anything she said was true, and avoid Kabuto. He didn't expect Hinata to cry suddenly, making Shino and Kiba stop fighting, if the former actually was fighting against Marin. You have no sense of teamwork Fu sighed. You think this would just be one against one? She had her own clones, hidden in trees. Sadly, the clones couldn't fly. Let me suggest something Naruto said, you keep your scroll, we have the one we need already, and you turn around and search for another. What good does that do us Kiba scowled at Naruto. Actually taking a hostage. Threatening the girl that liked him. I won't knock you out and give you the advantage of that time that it would take you Naruto glared at him. He didn't like doing this, but it was necessary. You really are Ronin, aren't you Shino commented, his head tilted. We accept, Yuzumaki-san. Hinata took that moment to faint after she finally stopped crying. That girl he fought with in the war she wasn't with him right now. Maybe she would change again. Hopefully. Perrin the red head appeared from her hiding spot. Apparently being a good sensor made you good at stealth too. Probably because she knew what sensors generally looked for, few will fly us to the tower, but because we are three she will have to use more wings. That mean? Or Biju Chakra. She flinched back, the moment they used the chakra she felt bad, it was poisonous to her senses. We can knock you out for the way, if you want. No no, I can deal with it. 2 hours and 52 minutes. The Chunin appearing in front of them stated. That's better than the old record, though you were beaten by the Suna team with the scary child. Now, what is she doing here? Perrin held out a few documents. Why didn't you show us those Naruto ask after reading them too? If the Hokage gave you a permit to stay in the village, what you said must be true. I forgot. Karen threw up on the floor. Apparently the Bijuu chakra strained a bit more than expected. Naruto helped her up, trying very hard not to be disgusted. That's gonna be my whole day, isn't it Naruto asked Fu, who just nodded. Marin ran inside already to get some food and a challenger. Fight me apparently the challenger was more important. Marin. Let the tune in alone Fu shouted, feeling a headache coming her way. I really wonder if it was a good idea going with you sometimes. What is it with you and insane people? With her arm around his shoulder, Naruto helped Karen up and answered with a dry voice. I'm sorry, bug girl, you must be the mother of all normality. I am impressed you know a word like misanthropic few commented, not denying his words at all. Hell it, we need someone to watch her. Can you tell Marin to get the food Naruto asked. Nope few said, he would be distracted, and I'm afraid what would happen, should he meet Gara. Shit dot both said, Gara. Apparently, Marin wasn't stupid enough to run up to the obviously dangerous Yinchuriki. Sadly, the obviously dangerous Yinchuriki remembered his threat all too well. Fight me, Yuzumaki Naruto, and let me prove my existence Gara was grabbing his head while shouting, his face not quite a grin. No fighting in the tower Naruto told him, not now, but if you give me time, I will fight you in these exams. Damari and Kankuro stepped away from both of them. Fu was more insulted about the fact he didn't mention her. No. I want to fight you now. Marin was guarding Karen right now, so they wouldn't have to worry about her. But if a fight actually started here. Stand down, Jenin, or you will be disqualified. Ibiki appeared suddenly. Let me explain it simply, no matter how strong you are, in this village there are stronger people that can take you down. Thanks Naruto said to Ibiki after the sand siblings finally left. I didn't do this for you, Yuzumaki Ibiki told him, since you came here everything is going to hell. Odo. The last part was muttered. 
Naruto just nodded and pointed at the door Gar left through. You and I will take care of him Naruto promised, maybe the old man already briefed you, heard about the spy. Baron told them of course, they just couldn't prove Yukushi Kabuto was a spy. But if he really was a jonin level ninja hidden as genin, they couldn't make a mistake and lose important lives. Thus, Saratobi Asuma was ordered to observe him after they returned to the tower. Bakashi was busy protecting his student from the snake. Hopefully. These here dot Marin appeared next to them, Karen behind him. I told the Anbu that Karen can feel anyone sneaking up on her, so they should be open while protecting her. It has been five days already, and Karen has begun to trust the Anbu a bit more. They wouldn't have to fight, just take her away from the room should an assassin come closer. He in this case was Kabuto. And he stood there, looking half dead. 21 Genin left, the Aim, Kusa and Takinin were out. Only one of Kumo's teams managed to bring two scrolls. My own sister beat me a blonde man beside Samui cried out from the stands. Your dedication was too hot. That passion was too much for even me. Samui tried not to sigh. She failed miserably. Luckily, Atsui's teammates grabbed him and pulled him away from her. Would all Genin come to the center please they did. The old man stood there. All of you here, congratulations on passing the second exam Hiruzen, said the Jonin standing behind him was not Odo Jonin, instead C was there. Good. Let me tell you why these exams are actually held. The talk about war made most come down from their height. A shinobi's true strength is only born through risking your life in battle. And because you are too many we have to cut your number down again. Thus we will hold preliminaries. But Kiba's voice came from behind them. We just came out of the forest. That excuse won't hold when you are in battle Hey, Jekko appeared beside the Hokage with a shunshin. If you think you aren't ready, you can leave now. Only Kabuto lifted his hand to leave. Again. The Hokage nodded to Naruto though, and Naruto blinked. Of course, Kabuto was being observed, and the Anbu only had to bring her to this room the moment an assassin came. Now Hei coughed between his every word, these preliminaries will be like the finals, one-on-one -on -one battles. The loser goes, the winner goes to the finals. Go up to the stands and wait for your name to be called. This is good Marin grinned, the best of the best. The strongest of the strong. Hiba and Ino were whispering in one corner. The strongest genin in the exams maybe. And even then, Shikamaru probably carried his team through with his tactics, and Shino helped Hinata and Kiba through. Quest, updated. Tune in exams preliminaries. Battle. Kamigata Marin vs Samui of Kumagakur. Finally Marin shouted with a grin. You are the first Naruto said, patting him on his shoulder, don't underestimate her, I nearly lost to her teammate, and I think she's stronger. If possible, Marin's grin grew wider. You, I remember you. Samui said when they were on the lower floor. You were that crazy guy that attacked Naruto on the way to Kumo. Ah, such a pale beauty Marin grabbed his chest. It's like his body automatically did that every time he felt too strongly about something. Please, Milady, go out with me after this battle. I refuse. She said coolly. Marin fell to his knees. Wahahahe Ino's laughter was heard, which made him glare into her direction. Hurry it up. Hey, it said. The battle begins now. Observation. Naruto looked at Samui, her HP was pretty much the same as Marin, her chakra significantly higher. The perk that stood out though was hard working ninja. No special ability, no special style. Pure skill she trained hard. Right? Crawling snakes she pushed her hands on the floor, making lightning appear and rushed to meet Marin. She had jutsu, stronger jutsu than him. Could use them more often. But he had one advantage too. Buten can jutsu. Low cut dot his sword's tip slightly cut in the flood as he spun it around and created a small wall of wind that went forward, destroying the lightning snakes and forcing her to dodge. Your slow Samui appeared behind him, pulling out her tanto and stabbing forward. No Marin dodged barely and grabbed her hand, you are just very fast. Dodging down again as she slashed, he grabbed his legs and dropped the weights on them, jumping backwards he did the same to his arms. Damn that feels good Dottie commented, holding the sword more comfortably. Wait she looked questioningly at them. I see, cool way to train your speed. Thank you, pale beauty Marin said, jumping forward and slashing at her from above. Ah she actually screamed when her arm was forced down, and the fabulously colorful sword of Marin cut shallowly into her shoulder. After a few seconds she could finally jump backwards and dodge another slash. That thing is heavy. Made by a smith in Takumi village, a futon blade Dottie told her. This thing is very heavy, but its blade will cut anything that isn't fire enchanted. Nuo Atsui's voice came from above. And my Raiden loses against your futon dot she admitted. But sadly for you, I have trained hard under Killer B, and Raiden isn't the only thing I've learned. My brother is a Katen user after all. Kumura I. Flame beheading she sent flames forward, and Marin dodged upwards, his legs still getting hit due to his heavy sword, not allowing him to jump too high. 
A-H-H. Hadi landed on his feet again before falling to his knees in pain. Kamigot arrived. Earthquake. He stabbed his sword into the floor, a crack appeared and rushed to meet Samui's fist. Brayton. Lightning punch her lightning enchanted hand stopped the attack. You were at a disadvantage against me. If I only used a sword, I would have lost. Ah it seems so Marin nodded, his sword returning to its scabbard. I give up, you have beaten me. I have not trained hard enough. Good job Naruto told Marin who got the burns on his legs healed. The next match was going to begin soon. Uzumaki Naruto Marin began, you only ever use your sword against me, never the jutsu you learned, even if you know they would give you an advantage. Why? If you only use the sword and its techniques, I have no need to use anything else. Naruto told him, we aren't enemies after all, we are rivals, aren't we? Naruto put his first forward, Marin grinned and bumped with his own. Battle. Kari vs Gara. Should. Naruto's eyes widened. Kari, you can't fight him. What, wh? These Ijin Shuriki Naruto shouted his warning. Shit, now Odo's spies knew they knew no, Kabuto probably knew before. Kari's eyes went to the emotionless looking Gara. Hell, Dot Kari muttered nervously. The guy seemed unstable, worse than that actually, she could feel his bloodlust under his calm facade. He wouldn't hesitate to use his chakra, compared to Naruto and Fu. I give up. Naruto didn't want his friends to be hurt. And he didn't know if he could forgive Gara for killing someone he cared about. Very well, the next match then Dot Hate said, his coughs getting more frantic. Didn't he know? Who did the Hokage brief and who did not? Battle. Hai Uganiji vs Inuzuka Kiba. The battle couldn't be called such. It was a slaughter. Kiba, already weak from the forest, was thrown around like a ragdoll, while Niji blocked any strike from Akamaru. They went down rather quickly. Battle. Kankuro vs Nara Shikamaru. Shikamaru was forced to go down by his teammates, standing in front of Kankuro. Hajime no jutsu success. Shikamaru's clan controlled enemies by means of shadows. The way to do that is by linking the shadows. As long as it is human in appearance the shadow link works. And thus Shikamaru controlled Kankuro's puppet when Kankuro hid behind it. A fatal mistake, because Shikamaru expected him to do that and just ran backwards as fast as he could, hitting the wall, but making the puppet hit Kankuro against the wall. Ah Kankuro jumped out. How did you know the shadow spread to Kankuro, and he let the puppet go? It was obvious you were a puppeteer, you should know Shikamaru pointed to him, making Kankuro copy the technique. My clan fought many of you in wars before we were allies, you're as long as it has a shadow, it can be forced to move by us. Only, it's much harder with animals than with humans. Kankuro didn't have many weapons on his person, most were in the puppet. So when Shikamaru grabbed a kunai, and Kankuro didn't have one, the latter gave up before it had to be used. As long as Gara was in the exams, they could stay in the village anyway. That wouldn't make his father happy though. Shikamaru just lay down to sleep when he was with his team again. Battle. Hai Uga Hinata vs Yamanaka Ino. I did not expect that. Naruto muttered after the battle. Besides him, Fu nodded. Hinata began the battle not with any words like Ino, she rushed up with an activated by Akigen and hit Ino's arms, making any use of the Yamanaka clan technique impossible. I think she snapped, Fu commented. Why Naruto asked, but the girl beside him just shrugged. Maybe her words came through. If you aren't strong enough, I will not allow you to stand besides him. Battle. Tamari vs Akamichi Chaoji. Chaoji was strong, no doubt. But his exhaustion made his technique not as effective. Tamari easily sent him flying again and again until he finally released his technique, exhausted and battered. Battle. Rock Lee vs Tsurugi Misumi. Lee freed himself from any joint lock Misumi put on him and just kicked him until the other boy fell unconscious. He really wondered how they managed to get through the forest with that kinda team. Battle. Yuzumaki Naruto vs Tenten. Hell yes Tenten jumped down followed by Naruto. If I beat you, give me your sword. No. Please she put her hands together, begging him. This sword was a gift by Shibari, leader of Takigakur. Naruto told her. I will not give up something as precious as this, Tenten san. Spoil sport. She pouted, grabbing a scroll and unsealing a mace. No, what's it called? Flail. The flail. She actually swung a flail at him the moment the match started. Tenten. 2150 HP. 1200 C. Locking the strike of the flail, his arm was thrown away from his body, the force of the attack too much. She quickly unsealed a tanto and tried to stab him. He caught her arm before she could. He could finish this quickly if he used Karama's chakra. Or release the weights. But where would be the fun in that? Tenten's only true disadvantage was the fact she only used weapons. But that made her unpredictable all the same. Tsuiten Kenjutsu. Crushing blade the water enchanted blade hit her flail and shattered the chain before he spun around and hit her shoulder. 
Suiten Kenjutsu. Crushing Blade leveled up, LV.2. Suiten Kenjutsu. Crushing Blade the water was more now, the sword felt heavier but stronger all the same. But this time she blocked the strike with a great shield. I thought you used weapons. Tsukuyushi took the shield with both hands and hit him with it, his HP going down slightly. But she had only 1500 HP left. I will learn your secrets, Ron and Tenten called out to him and brought out two big scrolls. Jumping up she opened them. Twin rising dragons. The rain of weapons upon him was incredible. Suiten. Large projectile the water that left his mouth diverted most of the projectiles, but some still hit his left side. He returned the sword to its scabbard. The Edo, Hutenton brought her great shield out again and ran at him. When she was too close for him to use the technique correctly, she tried attacking him with it again. The sword doesn't have only one part Naruto told her, the motion for the Edo began. He can't hit me with a blade. Tenton was confident. But her chin was hit by the hilt, sending her backwards. My my legs feel like jelly. Betting hit on the chin does that to people, she knew. Guy told them it was always a good way to make sure your enemy won't stand up. She fell backwards, not able to stand up anymore. That was intense fuel looked wide-eyed at the weapons on the floor. So much metal. Dorito picked a few smaller weapons out of his armor. Here, keep them. Haha dot she laughed flatly. Battle. Few versus Abiram Shino. Wish me Lu. I give up. You can't do that to me Few shouted. I waited to fight. Come on. I cannot beat you, Jinchuriki dot Shino admitted. Your chakra is too much, and should you use the Biju it would burn my bugs out. Few just glared at him the whole time. Battle. Amoy vs Akadu Yoroi. Amoy wasn't like Sasuke before. He wasn't weakened by a curse seal, and he was stronger than Sasuke was at that time without a Sharingan. He was trained by someone that is as strong as their cage. So Amoy just dodged most swipes of Yoroi and cut open the back of his knee. When he couldn't stand anymore, he had the sword at his throat. Winning. Naruto sighed, it was going to be a long month training and protecting Karen. He really wondered what Kakashi and Sasuke were doing.